Hello, greetings, salutations. I'm Jason Carl from White Wolf, and this is Seattle by Night, our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, set in the Pacific Northwest with all its rain and clouds and coffee and who knows what else. Oh, and vampires. I'm told there are vampires. Speaking of vampires, let's meet some. Uh, hello, uh, I am uh, Jerry Holkins, uh, but for the duration of this game, I'm taking on a vampire persona. Um, Jameson Keen, uh, this is, you know, we've done a bunch of these. You know who he is. He, he's a, he wears a suit and he's weird looking. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Dora. Uh, I am playing Amanda, and um, she is a young, young vampire in that she just recently became a vampire and a young student. Forever student, I would say. <laughs> forever, forever student. Forever student, forever forever student of this world. Now. And forever vampire student, so, yeah. It's like beautiful. It, it, <laughs> aren't we all always learning? Yeah. I saw a bumper sticker that said, learning is natural, school is optional. <laughs> I feel nourished by this right? sticker, right? Wow. That's how you that know this is like a Pacific Northwest. <laughs> you like, actually like, looked yeah. at a bumper sticker and it impacted you. I feel like that's I did, rare. yeah. That was 20 years ago, Dork. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Albert Einstein. Oh Albert Einstein said that. And it's as true today as it was in 1912. <laughs> Who are you playing today? Or tonight? I go Since last. Time. You're going to go last? I just interrupted. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> not my turn. Oh, I got off track. Hello. I am Jasmine, <laughs> that bronze girl Bueller, and I play uh, Bellevue Betty. Bellevue Betty. she is now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been dubbed um, in a sort of off-the-cuff remark that I kind of regret, but I'm okay with it. I'm going to live with these connotations like coming the, from Bellevue. I like the moniker. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like alliteration. It's always mm. good. Yeah. So, she's, um... She's got a checkered past. I'm just going to leave it at that. I think we found that out yesterday. Sure, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, in the back seat of the car. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Mike. I'm playing Tom Hollandaise. I'm a tattoo artist. I'm also a very new vampire. And I'm not very good at it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> the end. The it end. makes me so sad. Yeah. It's like such a tragic story. I like that really sucks. always like, I hate this. So let's continue. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Tom's, <laughs> turn. Tom, Tom's turn, when it comes, is going to be a, a thing to see. Yeah. I agree. I'm looking forward to it. But I don't want to rush it either. No, no, no. Not either. That's something you want to savor for years. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Betty loves it because it's been, and I'm sure Jameson does too, because yeah. it's been so long since we've been human. It's new. It's, it's like, like it's new for us. Right. It's new for it's us really too. Nice Are you still to attached see the to that? through your eyes. Mm. Yeah. Right. It's like I'm living it too. Oh, it's like going to Disneyland with a kid. Yeah. yeah. You can look at a nacho without vomiting. That's so novel. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Like you smell that nacho cheese, and for you, it's like a good smell. For it us, is. It's like, oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For good. you, it's like, you know, burning what? Hair. Probably hair. tires. Oh. Yeah. It's about the worst thing you can yeah. think of. It's Burning, bad. The hair is pretty bad, yeah. No, it's the worst thing you can think of, and now it is also on fire. I think that's the two <laughs> that's the two step process. And now it's burning. It's improved. And now it's burning Got with it. cheese. There was some burning in our last episode. Mm -hmm. This is episode three of Seattle by Night. And to recap briefly where we left off, the coterie which hasn't named itself yet. I'm looking forward to the moment when it has to describe itself with, a, with an interesting, an interest, another interesting moniker. Mm -hmm. uh, successfully, or so it believes, completed its mission, which was assigned by representatives of the Camarilla faction. And the mission was to enter the comet, a derelict freighter ship, which was at anchor in Tacoma's commencement bay, to locate a vampire in the comatose sleep of torpor to open a box and to follow the instructions therein. And that's where things got interesting because the order of operations somehow got a little reversed. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> somehow. Somehow. It's somehow. as if we didn't uh, follow of, instructions. <laughs> a lot of young vampires here. Somehow. Things went off the rails. Yeah, it's definitely the young vampire's fault. <clears throat> but definitely. <laughs> in the course of completing the mission, uh, you disarmed a magical trap. Yes. Amanda did. You encountered uh, an individual whose name was Antony from Clan Giovanni, who and what he really is and what he was doing there remains to be, to mean, remains to be seen. You woke up the sleeping vampire who proceeded to eliminate a trio of rivals 
At least you hope they were rivals and not potential friends because they're all dead now. <laughs> Jesus. And no, right. uh, Amanda yeah. <laughs> suffered the pangs of remorse and mm. regret for being party to, even indirectly, what can only be described as a murder. Right. So, but you were able to uh, overcome your feelings of, of laissez-faire and uh, acceptance and retain that core of, of humanity and conscience that you cling to. You, in other words, you made uh, success on your um, humanity role, your right. remorse check. I have, yeah. a, I have a question. Point of order. Ooh, I have an answer. It might even be right. If, you, you never know. <laughs> obviously, this being the Seattle by Night campaign, it's a vitally important thing that we discuss. If you have a very, very high humanity, does that increase the chances of them writing your name correctly on your Starbucks cup? You know, that's an interesting question. It has come up before in other chronicles. Yeah. And what we decided was that it depends on a combination of your humanity and your blood potency. <laughs> <laughs> I... I Really like you. Okay, please continue. <laughs> See, there was an answer. No, <laughs> it's very sophisticated. Yeah. It's it's actually a, a derived stat. Uh, it's it's the, debated for years. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> we will uh, we'll open episode three approximately where we left off. It's still the same night, although the hours of darkness are beginning to wane. You've got maybe three hours of good darkness left before you got to think about retiring for the day. Uh, several of our vampires are. Um, Let's see, Amanda has suffered two aggravated wounds, which we mm -hmm. don't know how to heal yet. We'll right. have to figure that out. Okay. And you have also suffered some superficial damage to your willpower, as has Tom. A little bit. So um, it's the beginning of the next session, which is normally when your willpower superficial damage would refresh, but we're still in media race. Right. So you retain that damage for now. Um, you had a meal delivered. I didn't have a meal delivered. <laughs> my, uh, yeah. DoorDash? My yeah. DoorDash yeah. is right outside. But I'll remind you, you're, you're only at, currently, you were at hunger one, which right. means you probably wouldn't wouldn't slake your thirst because that would involve killing. I would have to kill him and I would However, yeah. if you want to try to um, heal one of those aggravated uh, health levels while you're en route to report your success, this would be an excellent time to have a snack in. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and heal like. Um, so. One of them. I, I think, I don't know. I think I want to keep the... It's pretty dope. It's pretty cool. Your brand? My brand? Like, yeah. yeah. I, what does it look like? It's an interesting symbol. It's a circle, but there are also some marks or sigils okay. uh, that you don't recognize in the circle. Yeah. Now, when you heal that aggravated damage, eventually that will fade. It's okay. not possible for you to keep that on your hand. Okay. Because when we sort of revert, right? Is that the yeah, idea? Your, your flesh will knit and mend eventually. To heal the aggravated damage, I'll describe the process to you because it's a little, it's a little uh, dangerous. Okay. Aggravated damage is caused by fire and sunlight and magic. Mm -hmm. um, it's the only source of damage that can really kill you if you take enough of it. If all your health boxes are filled with aggravated damage, you fall into torpor too. And in that right. state, you can be very easily killed. You can be killed by a third grader with a popsicle stick at that point. Oh, my God. Okay. So to heal well, aggravated, heart. you can heal one health level of aggravated damage a night. Okay. So if you take a lot of it, it's going to take many nights to heal. Okay. For each point of aggravated damage you heal, you must make not one, not two, but three Rouse checks. You could what? get up to hunger four if you fail all oh three. Oh, my gosh. Which is great that you have... The juice box. The juice box. Yeah, handy, I got my juice right? Box outside. So take three hunger dice. Okay. And please roll them. This is to heal one aggravated. I wound. hate this. That's not mm. bad. Mm. So one of them is a success. Yes. But the other two are failures. So in the process of healing this aggravated wound, the flesh, the undead flesh, begins to mend and knit together mm -hmm. as though by magic. Right. And the mark, the burn on your palm does begin to fade and recede into your flesh. You can still see it, it's still kind of cool, still kind of badass there. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a scar now than a burn. Okay. But your hunger increases. Let's see, you were at uh, hunger one. one and now you were at hunger three. Yeah. Hangry. I'm hangry. Dear God, oh. each of the failures. Each of the failures, because I was like, hey, success. 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 Mm, no. Mm -mm. If only it were that kind of world of darkness. Yeah, it's, it's an unkind world of darkness. I can't even imagine. This is this is a this, this is, is scary. thirst. Mm -hmm. So your thirst now is so um, is so great. It's weighing on you so heavily that you're actually 
hangry. You're frustrated. Yeah. You feel like you could snap at any moment if you don't get a snack. Fortunately, Daddy delivered. He did. Right? You have a, a yeah. willing uh, donor that meets your particular dietary preferences. Oh, no. Yeah, your predatory predator style is Perfect. that of a consensualist. And this individual knows full well what he is getting into. It's been explained to him. And uh, you are able to uh, remove your hunger by feeding from him without fear and harm if you want to. It right. being as codified as it is, like how normalized Amanda's <laughs> thing is, it doesn't is. make it better for <laughs> it totally, me. It mm -hmm. almost makes it worse, I would say. It's a, it's a pretty In terrible thing to contemplate, really. Yeah. Could you imagine taking a loan out from Amanda's dad and you're like... He's Where like, does oh, it go from here? You can pay me yeah. twenty grand, or, or you can my get in daughter's car. gonna eat you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, in fifteen it, minutes, a car is going to arrive at your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like a dark car. Yeah, and uh, I mean, this guy's been waiting around all night too. So oh, it's like, yeah. he's just like, I at a, at a suspicious dog. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. he's to be bitten. He's had <laughs> an even, hour and a half to just think about it. Yeah, he's just like I. This is gonna happen, and just this teenage girl's gonna come. She's well, early twenties. Um, you, because he doesn't know. He doesn't know what you're gonna look. Like. He doesn't know what I'm gonna look like. Oh he doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess if we're still going up, I'm like, we need to. Well, outside now. I, I, we, let's get. If it's of any comfort, your, uh, your snack, yeah. Bob, Bob, yeah, Bob Cazada, oh, uh, Bob. explains to you That's that he, he has been waiting a while. Um, but as he understands it, uh, you have a rare blood condition. He's super sympathetic. He's very sorry to hear that you have this rare disease. He is, your father explained everything to him. He's happy to clear his debt to your dad by, by helping you through this very difficult time. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he consents to give you what you need in order to make yourself better. Is this so. a pretty normal, like, normal for someone to be like... Have well, this sort of like dialogue beforehand, or am I like sort of in shock? Like, what? I think I think that's I think that's a piece of the story that's fun for you to create. Like, okay, how does how does Amanda react to this? I think that uh, I think that at this point she's justified it in her head, even if it is mm -hmm. um, even if it is completely wrong. I think she's sort of made it in her head where it's just like, yeah, I, I mean, technically I do have a blood disorder, sort of in a way. <laughs> you know, if I think about it, I don't know. You know, but she sort of justified it in a way. Mm -hmm. She's like. Yeah, it's really hard. I, yeah, I mean, it's really tough. I really appreciate what you're doing, and I know, like, appreciate it so much. He seems very understanding. He he hears there's there's no telethon, there's no cure, there's no nothing yet. But yeah. he, he understands that your dad is working on setting up a, a program for for uh, to help. Yeah. I hope that we get to meet Daddy someday. <laughs> I hope we don't. <laughs> yeah, he's scary. Are yeah. You, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he seems really scary. Uh, I say uh, thank you, and I guess I, I asked everyone to stand back because well, I don't want them to see you. But the truth, right, is that you actually have your own car too. Yes. Well, you do. If we come back out, there's two vehicles. Like mm -hmm. we, you, you can eat, you can eat lunch yeah. in your car and mm -hmm. brekkie. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, yeah. So um, after he's done explaining, I go, well, thank you very much. Um, ready? He's ready. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just. Sink my teeth in. You sink your teeth in. So now, was um, that what he was expecting? He wasn't sure exactly what yeah. was going to happen. Uh, maybe it wasn't this, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's kind of into it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. because of course, when the vampire's fangs bite in, the vessel or victim, depending on your point of view, is overcome with a state of bliss. It feels good, um, and you're not going to kill Bob. Am right. I correct in thinking that? You're no. going to you're going to take the edge off your hunger, you're going to satisfy two hunger dice worth of hunger, but you're going to let him live. So right. Bob is going to come out of this with the feeling that he's, you know, given a pint or two of blood. He yeah. maybe needs some orange juice and a cookie. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Okay. But it was certainly not an unpleasant experience okay. for him at all. Okay. Huh. Well, that's helpful for like I think Amanda's justification too in mm -hmm. her own head. So uh, of of all the ways to to um, deal with a vampire. Getting your blood, this is, dare I say, humane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In the range of possible <laughs> Right. Unlike what happened in the engine room of the comet an yeah. hour ago. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or the bathroom. Or yeah. the bathroom, bathroom in Montreal. Betty is upset Why are we bringing that up? Well, we're <laughs> sitting in the SUV. I'm just like, everybody gets a snack today except me. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everybody's true. had a snack. Even that freaking weirdo in the, in the, in the, 
engine room. He had a lot That's of snacks. True. He got a lot of snacks. I've been <laughs> seeing everybody yeah. have bees today, and I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm like, peckish. Beatrice, there's no shortage. You're right. And you're right. You're right. I need to stop being so petty. There's no shortage. Yeah. You're right. I, I have every faith that were you to accompany me to West Seattle, mm -hmm. we could find someone who is perhaps on keto. Uh, I'm, I understand that that is a, uh, an experience. Well, I would be up to try that. I haven't Consider. had fresh blood in a long time. Consider it. I'll think about it. That might be nice. A warm meal. I'm mm. so used to having my meals cold. Mm. It's the vampire mm. equivalent of a PB and J, as it were. Oh, Tom's oh. okay with that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Cold. Beatrice, cold. Y yes. Cold. Well, I procure my food in a different way. Uh, you know, box service. How do you get it? Well, sometimes people owe me money and owe me things, and in return, I can ask for, you know, a crate of misplaced blood from the blood bank. Oh. That way, I don't really have to. Judgment. Over the here. idea Some of just like judgment. Yeah. Mm. You know, like. Do you not like to get your hands dirty? Gets all over your clothes. Okay. Within it upsets my butler. Within a hundred miles. Okay. For me, I, it's got to be local. <laughs> The uh, the opportunities are, are f the opportunities are pretty evident. Feeding, if you wanted to skip mm -hmm. the bag blood and get something fresh, yeah, not not too difficult. Now, once in a while, I partake, but yeah. sometimes it's just a lot of work, huh. you know. Beatrice, I, if anyone should be concerned about carbon emissions, it's got to be vampires. First and foremost. I mean, we're the ones who are going to inherit the earth. So you're right. I'll think about it. I'll take it into Consider advisement. It. You visit me. Uh, we'll have the run of the place, as it were. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a wonderful well, night on the town. I would enjoy that. Consider We could go dancing. Well, very briefly. <laughs> very briefly. So, uh, when you leave the shipyard behind... Uh, if I recall correctly, your intent was to go report your success. Uh, indeed, we have a we have a number and everything. You have a, num a phone number and everything. Yes. Uh, so um, were we told to report? We were just told to call the number if it was an absolute mm -hmm. emergency. We were told to call the number if it was a, a critical emergency that threatened the masquerade. But Mr. Drew did indicate he would wait for you at the at the yeah, fir tree. Yeah, the, the okay. fir tree is actually. I mean, that would be the safe place to to meet up mm -hmm. anyway, um, and sort of go through the. Like, you know, debrief, go through the night. Mm -hmm. Okay. You may recall that the fir tree wasn't too far from the port of Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that was why the Camarilla chose it mm -hmm. as the meeting point. Um, as your vehicles pull into the parking lot, a light rain is falling. Sunrise is still a few convenient hours away. You're in the suburb of Tacoma known as Fife. A land of strip malls and truck stops and greasy spoon diners and inexpensive motels. And the fir tree is the most inexpensive of the bunch. It's got one of those lurid green neon signs that blinks fitfully in the shape of a tree that reminds you of one of those old air fresheners, old time air fresheners, oh, that no. strange it evokes, cookie cutter shape. It evokes a tree it. while mm -hmm. being the antithesis. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's a decrepit, gray, uninviting place with faded siding and peeling paint. And this just isn't a place to stay. This is, this is just, this is merely shelter and nothing better than that. This is the last stop before sleeping outside or on the street. You may recall that next door is a diner selling $2 nacho. It's an all-night yeah. diner. And there are patrons taking advantage of the late hour. Well, are the nachos that I left on the garbage cans? So? They, have, they have vanished. Oh, Someone has, has taken them That's perhaps cool. as a snack. Is he, is he mad? <laughs> yeah, he's kind of mad. He's like looking around His the garbage can. His intention was to leave a nacho. Yeah. It's not even a person. It's going to be like a raccoon. <laughs> and he's like looking in the garbage cans. Yeah, it's oh. just like... God, you do have heightened senses. 
Uh, Dude, they can, it is possible the for you to, <laughs> if you wish, to open your uh, track down ability, the nacho. To track down the nacho. I mean, I will open my senses real quick. Real quick. Just if I catch any whiff of cheese. You note know two things. One, a f- very faint droplets of cheesy substance on the ground leading away from the trash can. Shrap. And very, very faintest scent of melted plastic cheese like substance wafting through the night air. That's pretty remarkable when you think about it, that you can, as, yeah. a, as, a, as a human, you could not have detected even the faintest hint of nachos that had been left here hours ago. But no. as a vampire... No, I'm curious. I'm just going to, I'm going to sort of follow, I'm, follow? I'm following the cheese trail. Mm-hmm. So following the cheese trail around behind the hotel office, through the, uh, through the windows of the, of the motel office, you can see the night manager. He's got his feet propped up on the desk. He's trying to make his television work. It's one of those old console styles. It's sort of permanently stuck between two channels. He can't quite get it to, get it to work. He's paying no attention to you as you walk around the outside of the motel office uh, where you find, um, as, uh, as Jameson predicted, uh, a raccoon messily devouring the last bit of <sighs> nacho, of stuffing its face. <sighs> the raccoon freaks yeah. when you get near. It hisses, it extends its claws, it bares its teeth, and it breaks speed records getting out of there. It Can I use hair rapid, rapid reflexes indeed. to kick the raccoon? Kick the raccoon, yes. You Rapid reflexes <laughs> means you always act first in any yeah. confrontation. So you want to aim a well-placed kick in the raccoon. <laughs> right right to his little raccoon skull. There's, there's it's gonna be, right through the uprights. Yeah. It's gonna I'm going to boot him. They're quick. Deal with it. It's going to be very hard. So I'm going to ask you for a dexterity and athletics roll. Uh, <laughs> first roll of the game, guys. I'm looking for five successes here. I only have four dice. Ooh, <laughs> difficult. Well, your, your op- I would say that's difficult. Your, op- yeah. your options would be to uh, risk hunger to increase your dexterity by one by one dot, temporarily. Mm. Oh, I'm just gonna try to kick him. Maybe four successes. You're not hungry, are you? One, two. Miraculously appear. So unfortunately, you whiff. You don't you connect with through. the raccoon. And it takes off into the night, leaving behind one lonely triangle of cardboard-like substance soaked in melted cheese. Put it in my mouth. You're actually going to do it and put it in your mouth? Just, I, yeah. The reaction is almost instantaneous. You can't eat food anymore. <laughs> and you spit it back out, a few droplets of Vitae accompany it. It tastes like dirt, bad dirt, ashes. It's very disappointing. I lay in the mud where the raccoon was and I cry. When you cry, you don't cry tears anymore. It's blood. So you stain, your face is stained with this blood is tears. This is the darkest that's, that's <laughs> moment in I, history. I come back around. You failed to I've kick got, a raccoon. I've got blood <laughs> coming down in my face. My heart. And, I, and it's like, there was a raccoon and he took my nachos and he fought me and got away. Raccoon actually Scratch prevailed in this altercation, and he's crying blood tears. Aww. Anybody at hunger three or four? Nope, you no. solved that problem. So uh, I, pr- I produce with a swiftness uh, a pocket square mm. uh, for Mr. Hollandaise. I'm not crying. He scratched my face real good. <laughs> scratched my eyes. Oh my god! My heart. Raccoon. <laughs> I see. I see. Um, shall we? Mm-hmm. Tom. Hey. <sighs> door number six was your lucky door last indeed, time. Indeed. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll take full advantage. As you approach, uh, since you haven't indicated that you're turning off heightened senses yet, um, I'm going to mm-hmm. let you notice a few things. Number six is not the only unit in this motel that's occupied. There's something going on that you can hear in number seven to the right, nice. right next door. It sounds like an argument. Oh. Uh, it's you hear you hear raised voices, and uh, you hear a woman's voice say, "I'm running out of patience. I don't have all night for this. Either you tell us what we want to know, or I'm going to lose my temper." And a voice responds, ah, "Do do your worst. You get nothing out of me. I know you killed them. All three of them on that boat. I know they're gone." And that's what you hear with your supernatural hearing. Do I recognize that voice? Mm, doesn't sound familiar to you. 
Neither of them. Hmm. So the neither of the voices sound familiar? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some other X factor. Some other faction or I just you know, I let everybody know there's some business taking place next door and it's not the good kind. Okay. Hmm. I want to see what's I up. I notice how Betty's expression perks yeah. right up. Yeah. Sounds like a, a soiree. I kick the door down, and it's not going to take much. <laughs> Your strength is, I believe, one dot. Yeah, but mm. the store was like back sticks, these right? Doors yeah. are made out of Kleenex and also spit, one. right? Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. really ancient pasteboard doors that were never designed to withstand uh, a stiff kick from someone who knows what they are doing. Mm-hmm. The door flies open. They have one of those little tiny chains <laughs> pulled across. <laughs> oh, that, yes. you know, like maybe, maybe would have kept out, you know, uh, the raccoon. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Until it got, yeah. until it got upset <laughs> and it really, really <laughs> got it. Uh, the door flies open. The, it, the boot prints. Well, what are, wait a minute, you're wearing those those wonderful shoes that are mm-hmm. now covered in rust yeah. and dirt, and yeah. you're all a little bit disheveled and dirty from your your altercations uh, mm-hmm. aboard in search aboard the ship. The door flies open with a thud, slam, and the two figures inside both look at you with great surprise. One of them, the one evidently asking the questions, mm-hmm. looks like to be a young woman with. Uh, reddish hair that uh, is about shoulder length. She's wearing a dark uh, leather motorcycle jacket with the kind with all the zippers oh, and the cool. buttons and the mm-hmm. pins. Um, it's got a lot of flair on it. Yeah. yeah a lot of flair. Would you say like the requisite amount of flair? Or yeah. is this an it's, underachiever? There is a threshold. Mm-hmm. There, there is. There is a threshold. The th- events are happening very fast. You, you don't have an opportunity oh, yet to fair. evaluate the, the, flair, uh, the flair threshold yet, but maybe on closer examination. Um, she's wearing uh, jeans that are bloused into motorcycle boots. Mm-hmm. And you caught her right in the middle of about to deliver a punch to the figure who's seated and tied to the chair in front of her. Um, this individual, on the other hand, is also wearing a leather jacket, but uh, his leather jacket isn't nearly as nice and fancy and cool, and there is no flair in it whatsoever. Uh-huh. Light uh-huh. dirty, uh-huh. light uh-huh. orange. Make a note. Probably mm-hmm. deserves it. He's, he, uh, his, uh, his long grayish... Uh, hair is tied back in a very long ponytail. He's covered in uh, tattoos uh, that you can see at his wrists and his neck, uh, and then the holes of his torn and dirty jeans. Tom, these are not good tattoos. Oh, is this you bad work? You don't even think it's professionally done. Oh, these were done in bars. Almost offensive to the like, eye. Yeah, with a pen. Okay. In fact, it might offend phone? your sensibilities so much as to constitute an aesthetically unappealing oh, sight. Oh, in my I heightened sense, might, might, might trigger your. I am. Your that would piss band. me off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They both look up in serious surprise. The dude in the chair looks kind of hopeful, <laughs> and the woman with her fist pulled back looks exactly the opposite, irritated. It's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Who the hell are you? I could ask you the same. What business did you have aboard the boat? They both look at you with a little bit hint of recognition Uh, uh, and understanding dawning on their expressions. She shakes her head and says, you are in way over your head, sweetheart. Oh, (laughs) I don't appreciate your condescending tone, and if you use it with me again, I will cut your tongue out. Wow. That being said. (laughs) Okay, now we are into it. Tom I'm, just takes one step back away from it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I may look like I'm 35, but I'm not about to have some young whippersnapper mm-hmm. talk to me like that. Mm-hmm. The dude in the chair says, yeah, you tell her, sister, you tell her. We, rough her up. Yeah, so don't address me. Don't look at me. Also tell. Don't address me. He clams up, confused. What if we knew who was responsible for the murder of your friends on the boat and... Provided in return for information, we could scratch your back if you scratch ours. Metaphorically. 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 Don't touch me. (laughs) You're disgusting. Don't touch me. The redheaded woman turns her back on the dude in the chair and faces you with a new degree of interest. Almost respectfully, Mm -hmm. she nods and says, I'm listening, but you got it backward. They were his friends. Not mine. Right. Wait. Wait, no. Wait, didn't she say... <clears throat> oh! No, the tied-up guy is like, hey, I know, you know, that you did all this shit. Right? Oh, she cocks her oh head. I got it kind of reversed. Okay, my I bad. I did too. 
turns her head to the side and looks at you for a long moment. Does Mr. Drew know you're here? Of course. He's oh. expecting us. Is that the guy next door? Yeah, it's a white, this guy in the white suit. She seems worried, you think. Her expression has gone from angry to respectful now to concern. Mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to knock on the door we're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Number six? Yeah. Number six opens. Mr. Drew opens it. Hey, and we're here. Just, Everybody in. Hi, just, Mr. Drew. I was just about to check next door. You notice there was something going uh, on next door? Yeah, yeah we didn't I, know. I heard, I, heard a, I heard a thud or a bang or something. Oh, oh you know I what happens when these kind of hotels. I should check on my associate over you there. don't want to look mm-hmm. at that. that. No, let's have a nice little soiree. Why don't we all get together? Because I'm sure you're very excited to see me, Mr. Drew. I'm sure you're very excited to see all of us, in fact. Isn't that right, Tom? Oh, she's talking about, I know what this is. <laughs> Mr. Drew's mouth works, but no <laughs> sound comes out. His eyes get big. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take a psychologist to understand that he is shocked to see you standing in front of door number six at the Every Fir Tree Motel. He was Amanda has like a really big smile on her face. She's like really like, hi. <laughs> unprepared for this moment yeah. and probably unprepared for this conversation. I had overheard you say you didn't expect us to come back, and so she, she's that's what she's talking about. She's playing off of that. Oh, I, 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 th- I think <laughs> you misunderstood me, Mr. Hollandaise. I, I didn't mean, I don't, I didn't mean it the way you interpreted it. Oh. Your, oh, your, uh, your face says otherwise, I would um, say. What's going on next door? Odette, is everything okay? Yeah. <laughs> One of your buddies kicked in the door. But I still, I still got Remy here. He's on ice. We, I got this. You just, I'll take, I'll, I got this, Mr. Drew. I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Drew, that she does, in fact, have it. What, in what, fact. What, what do you mean? Should I look? I th- yeah, he hasn't been able to exit the door because no, Tom no, is no, no. filling there the door no, frame. There is no escape through the back. <laughs> He's going to have to do the weird thing where you open up the window that is, like, really hard to open. You're not really supposed to and try to get out. But I don't think it's going to work well. I would say, in fact... Mr. Drew, I suspect that you may not have it either. Uh, and won't and you it, come in this in? context, it, indeed. And I, I pass through. Um, pass by Tom and enter. It, in this context, has a broad definition. I would say that composure to begin with is something you currently lack. Mr. <laughs> Keen. Um, <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it's a. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. He uh, reaches up to straighten his tie. He is not wearing his white sport coat, however. It got cheesy last Jeez. time. It is draped over the chair behind him, and you see on the chair a bottle of club soda. <laughs> <laughs> he took yeah. the advice. Yeah. He did, and the, it, looks like, it looks like it has worked mostly. The, the stain now is very, very saint, faint. The uh, strange briefcase apparatus with the weird phone uh, is locked and sitting on the bed. Uh, I should say shut and not locked, but yeah. it's sitting on the bed. Um, and Mr. Drew backs up a few steps to allow you to yeah. enter. Oh, let me Mr. Entry. Keen, um, won't, you, um, won't you sit down? Uh, won't you all um, just make yourselves comfortable? I, I, I'm here? No, I, he keeps, it seems unlikely. He keeps glancing behind him as though he expects a door to magically appear in the back of the motel room, but yeah. there isn't one. I'm not certain anyone has ever been comfortable at the Fir Tree Inn <laughs> since the day of its founding. <laughs> And I, it's a policy to their credit that yeah. has been rigorously maintained. I'm going to, like, where the door is hanging open on mm-hmm. the little chain, like, grab the doorknob, give Odette a look, and just, like, slam just it slam back. Slam it shut. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> sort of like shut, it's sort of yeah. hanging off a hinge and maybe sort of <laughs> mm-hmm. closes. And I'll join them in room six. You hear a, a loud movement from next door and a scraping sound. Something has been moved across the floor and placed against the doorway. Uh-huh. Getting in next time might not be as easy. Well. Odette can be dealt with later. I have her name. That's all we need. All one needs. Mr. Drew has um, backed up as far as he can go until he is standing next to the bed, his back to the phone apparatus to allow you all enough space to enter the dimly lit and depressing motel room number six. Well, um, uh, uh, congratulations! Uh, congratulations! Yes. yes, of course. That's a nice um, ante. <laughs> am I uh, am I to understand that you were successful? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Betty. Uh, well, we're standing here, which yes. clearly was against your plans. Please. And Mr. Gravenstein is with you? He, he looks expectantly at the door um, as, a, as though Mr. Gravenstein, the, the Nosferatu you woke up, might come in at any moment. That was not a part of your instructions. instructions. Yeah, we read the instructions at the appropriate time, and they said nothing about bringing him back. Mm -hmm. uh, true, true. I just, um, you know, perhaps thought he might have decided to join you. No, I understand that there, the subtext of the instructions, available to us, no doubt as a result of our profound erudition, the secret third part of the rules was that we were to be eviscerated and that uh, the derelict boat uh, was to constitute a kind of long-term stay for us. Uh, uh, I have a lot of questions okay. and I suspect uh. that you don't have very many answers and the extent to which the gulf between them yawns, sir. Troubles me. Well, that's a, th those, are very, uh, those are very troublesome accusations. Um, I, I, I object. I disagree. I, I don't think that was... Are you calling Tom a liar? If he could sweat, he would. <laughs> it's clear that he, he doesn't have good answers. Um, no, of course, I would, never, I would never besmirch your integrity, Mr. Keene, but I, I, do, I do object to the notion that this was some sort of setup. The fact that we exist... How much of a problem do you think that's going to be for you the next time you open this case? For me personally? Indeed. That, um, that's a very, very, very good question. Can I like read his like face a little bit too? Sure. Let's see. Well, that was not as many successes as I had hoped to get. See if he lies or not. It's just written um, in text on his face. Right? Make a roll that is your wits and your insight. Oh, okay. You are at two hunger, so two of the dice in your pool will be red hunger dice. See, but, but this is going to give you the edge you need to succeed yeah. against mm -hmm. this writhing worm. Yeah. No, I'm hungry. Yeah. And if I get more hungry on this, I... I'm sorry, but I might eat this dude. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, let him open the thing first. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, how does that oh, happen? No. Are there any successes? No, there's none. But there's also no tooths. But there is no uh, no failure. No it's all blank. This is so it is neither neither a best failure. I am the failure, opposite of the rest. Nor a messy critical. <laughs> uh, that's how interesting. Crazy. What an interesting moment. So it's a complete and utter failure. If you if you if you deem this is a significant roll, you do have the option of spending superficial willpower to reroll up to three of the failed black dice. If you want to, uh, or you can just accept yeah. the failure. There's not even a single failure, not even a single success. Uh, I can't even offer you a chance to succeed at a cost. I guess I'll take a superficial willpower okay. damage. That's mm -hmm. fine. All I don't right. have a lot. But well, she's like she's in a state. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm probably like really emotional. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the yeah. part of the reason why I'm not reading him well. Yeah. And then based off of the information Tom gave us. Mm -hmm. The very real information. Like, I'm, that's kind of color my view of reading his reactions. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Oh, my God. You know what, what is it? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's fine. Dude, this is, what like are a, the this is the ultra stare down. Yeah, exactly. And it's a complete detente. <laughs> They're just staring yeah. at each other, like, for and, too long. Yeah. It could <clears> get worse. You may have noticed that I've also made a roll. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to make a counter roll. Okay. And I'd like you to please roll your composure plus your intelligence. Oh, shoot. Composure. Oh, oh man. I know what he Who puts points at this? So this mm -hmm. game you could actually make a roll and then it um, work against you if you're trying. Wait, so composure like and intelligence. Composure oh, no, and good. intelligence. Oh, Five. Get a respectable em. pool. No tooths. Like oh, that's better. Oh, that's excellent. Wow, that's that's better. Better. Oh, four okay, successes. Yes, four successes. Four successes. Excellent. Whew. <clears throat> for a moment, just for a moment, Mr. Drew seems friendlier and more appealing to you, more benign, someone that you could actually befriend if you um, were to take the time to get to know him as a person. It's almost a compulsion you feel tugging at your heartstrings. And then the moment oh, passes no. as your willpower your confidence, your own 
prepossession of mind asserts itself and doesn't allow you to fall for that that's supernatural a, that's a trap. bad move for him. It's a bad move for him in general, but it is <laughs> that's a my bag. bad move. That's like my bag. I, that's what I did to the, yeah. to the yeah. kindred no, in the, this in is the who home. You it are. feel like that. It didn't, no, it felt different? It didn't, it didn't feel like him trying to influence your thoughts. It felt like him trying maybe to influence your emotions, how you feel. Oh, disgusting. Oh, yeah. It's he wild. is not my type. Dirty yeah. tricks. It's gross. He's gross. Mm. So... Since your role exceeded the margin uh, of his, uh, in other words, he had no margin, and since your initial role to figure out his, um, his psychological state or his uh, truthfulness was a failure, it's a stalemate. Mm -hmm. You don't know whether or not he's lying specifically yeah. about what he said, but neither was he able to influence your actions. I don't, so the way Betty interprets this, because her insight role was so bad, is like he's being flirty. <laughs> and she doesn't like, like it. That's his, no. She doesn't like <laughs> yeah. it. It's inappropriate. Yeah, it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. Yeah, it's yeah. Read the fucking I get room. that I'm an attractive woman, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know. I have the stately nature. But Betty is not putting up with this. She grabs into her purse, pulls out a lipstick, crimson, mm. bright red, classic. Pulls up the top, walks over to where the coat is draped over a chair. <gasps> and is just like, mm. Start talking or I start coloring. Oh, 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 fuck. Hold him if no, you must, no, Jameson. Please, please. That, that, is a, that, that is a modiste oh, original. No. <laughs> my hair, my hand is just ever so lightly going down. What do you want to know? Fucking monster. Why do you want <laughs> us dead? And do you want us dead? Huh, I personally have no feelings or thoughts on the matter whatsoever. Oh, no. My <laughs> Wouldn't it be awful if this... My employers and associates may perhaps have other ideas. But I, I, I admit, I, I, I don't understand why you think we want you dead personally. All Fiorenza said was she didn't want to see you again. I took that to mean that she just wanted you out of her face. Yeah. That's, <laughs> no. That is what she said. Um, but, you know... Tom, We're, the world is full of mysteries Tom, like I thought this. they put out a hit on me. They might. Oh. We don't know. Clarity in language is key. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Listen, I'm just as mad as you are. Oh. For, oh what? At me. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I'm just. You don't have. You've already no, been I, so much, darling. Don't you're worry right. about I'm it. okay. Oh, this yeah. is the worst night <laughs> ever. Flip. It was this is the worst just, night you, ever. You, I can't you, believe this. To, I, I, let me comfort you, Mr. Drew. And I assume that's D R O O. Uh, it's E W, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> the funny thing is that you know when when I was before I was embraced and I, I really enjoyed getting coffee, um, and they always spelled it wrong too. Yeah, always. Well, yeah, welcome to Seattle. D R O U G H and D R. I hear that all the time. I never have had that problem. This is a criminal act, to be sure. Listen. I think that we can all agree that the evening has reached a, a low point. All this means is that things can progress to rapid improvement. And I've got a path to that improvement, Mr. Drew. What are you suggesting, Mr. Keane? I am Keen? suggesting that you simply tell me the rest of the story. Tell me about these brigands you've got next door. Uh, tell me about the other factions that you might have inserted into this scenario. <clears throat> Tell me about the authentic expectations that the Camarilla might have had. These, these are all quite reasonable things, given the fact that we have done as asked. But you knew perfectly well that you were releasing a kind of rabid badger uh, in the guts of this ship. Correct? We can agree that you've been duplicitous you know? at base. I need to get new dice myself. <laughs> oh. Dude, get the fucking anodized one. Yes. Oh, aren't they beautiful? Oh, so oh. nice. Oh, and the Want wick, to the eat. heft. Want to so eat. So good. While Jameson is talking to him, can I, real quick, can I use mm -hmm. my um, pickpocket larceny skill here Ooh. to check the coat? Absolutely. See if he's got uh, anything in his the His attention is on yeah. Jameson and on, on, on Betty. His eyes are moving yeah. back and forth. But mostly on, on Jameson because Jameson's been speaking. Let's make it um, dexterity and larceny together. You are not hungry, are you, Tom? Nope. No, you're not. So nope. you have no hunger dice Tom's in the roll. One, two. 
Only two successes. Two successes, though, is enough to, to dip your fingers into the outer mm-hmm. breast pocket of his uh, coat and uh, fish around in there and pull out very surreptitiously a business card. Ooh. It's got a phone number printed on it, but it is not the number that was given to Amanda. It's just a number? It's just a phone number. That's all there is. Yeah. I just pocket it for now. Well, Mr. Keene, um, as persuasive an argument as you make, you must appreciate how difficult and dangerous the situation is for me. Oh. It was, uh, it was that for us. So, <laughs> in, 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 Indeed. Uh, I would, in, in fact, to be perfectly frank, Mr. Drew, I would say that the danger, and I just I look meaningfully over at Betty, I wouldn't say the danger has abated fully. Then uh, forgive me for being so crass as to ask, but um, if I tell you what I know, what happens then? I've taken the lipstick away from his jacket, and now I'm like touching <laughs> nice. the lipstick touching up. up. And it's still it's still a threat, you but to, it's not quite. You have to do that without the aid of a reflective yeah, surface. Yeah, because I don't. I can't. You, you must see be mirrors. very practiced. So I just, yeah, now you you have an idea of like. Mm-hmm. So, uh, killing a, a vampire. I was just have a world question. Yeah, yeah. killing yeah. a vampire is is really bad if you're a vampire. Oh so, yeah. I mean, look at what happened to the other guy. Right. It it, it, it depends. Hmm. It depends. So right? I'm just curious. Like, what are we threatening him with? Oh, there's there's a range of things on the way to killing him yeah. that he won't like. Like that jacket. Right. Okay. But the idea is that mm-hmm. for a vampire to kill another vampire is real. Oh, we definitely yeah. don't want to kill the Camarilla's yeah. person here. Mm-hmm. But we do want to make him understand that the dynamics maybe are more sophisticated than he understands. Got mm-hmm. it. That was a conversation that Tom and Jameson had out loud, probably in front of <laughs> yeah, Mr. Yeah. Drew. No, wait, are we wait, killing wait. this guy? I understand. <laughs> I, I can appreciate, sir, that you are new to our society. I am a member of the Camarilla, sometimes known as the Ivory Tower, and it is, it is the oldest and most secure and wise faction of vampires. But there are other factions. In that was our, a hand job motion, buddy. I'm aware. I thought it kinder to say nothing. <laughs> um, in our in our society, in the Camarillo, we abide by six rules, the traditions, and they are centuries old. The first and most important tradition is the masquerade. I'm sure that you've been told. You, you may not tell others what we are. You mm-hmm. must keep the secret. And if you don't, then that could be a sentence of death. Almost as important is the sixth tradition, destruction. You may not kill another of your kind. In the Camarilla, if you kill another kindred and you are discovered, it could mean your life. But as Mr. Keene indicated, there are sometimes extenuating circumstances, and not all faction of vampires, I mean kindred, I'm sorry to say, abide by those rules. The Anarchs are lawless. The Anarchs are, are completely uncouth well, degenerates who none don't, of us, care nothing for laws. None of us are order. caramellos either, so yeah. we don't give two shits about your six rules. I see. I see. Oh, Joey. I see. I'm just take a step back. Yeah, it's, we, we got I had no idea. No, 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 we no, do. That's not true. We that's do. Not true. He's new. He's, 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 a, br- he's yeah. brand new. He's brand new. We're still teaching him. He's brand new. But, yeah. but that's... Let, let Which us. is honestly a failure on your part, a failure of the system. Yeah. He is a child who has <laughs> fallen the between system. the cracks. Exactly right. That's what it's about you know? at the end of the day. <laughs> And yeah. we are taking him <laughs> under our watchful eye and our caring wings, and we are taking care of his re-education. Our wings. We are outrageous. correcting your mistake. This is absurd. So, yes. Mr. Drew. Once we have engaged in a productive dialogue, I see no reason. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, the Camarilla being what it is, will almost certainly be prevailed upon again in the future. And should that occur, there's no reason that we can't continue to work profitably together, but there are gaps in the information that was offered. Let me, let, let, let me tell you how this night ends for you. 
He is very attentive to this. You have his complete and undivided attention. <laughs> and Tom's. Yeah. Like any other night, that's how. With you sequestered in a place of safety, imagine it. Imagine it. Imagine all the dry cleaning you'll be able to pick up in the future. He looks at Betty. Which I actually have a pretty big... As he looks at me, I'm just like, <laughs> am I in the lines? I mean, I've practiced a lot, but sometimes I still mess it up. Um, reminding him of what you are is probably the scariest thing that you could have said to this person. And that seems to take the last era out of his tires. And what exactly is the idea that she is... Uh, I, yeah. Well, Sombra has it. I want this night history. to end <laughs> okay. as normally as possible. Let us hasten it, sir. At this point, there is a loud noise from number seven next door. <laughs> ah! A shout. We think it's maybe from the fellow in the chair, uh, followed by several more loud noises. <laughs> the sound of breaking wood. Uh oh. And the sounds of a, a scuffle. Mm-hmm. Fisticuffs, perhaps? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He, uh, he looks nervously in the direction of the wall that separates Unit 6 from Unit 7, but I assume Odette has it all handled. Yeah. It sounds like it. <laughs> Here is what I know that I can tell you. It's true. I didn't think that you would return, but I didn't necessarily think that you would be eliminated as well. I just thought maybe the odds were even, and frankly, it is really none of my affair. Did you know anything about this vampire that we revived and like what they're capable of? Mr. Gravenstein, Mr. Gravenstein, um, yes. Mr. Gravenstein is a figure of some importance in Tacoma kindred history. Okay. He has at one point in time been the prince of the city. Okay. Of Tacoma. So you understand that he is very powerful and would have not I, have hesitated. And, and incredibly hungry, I would say he was very hungry. I believe he is uh, an Ancilla. He is at least a century old, perhaps older. He is not yet an ancient or, or an elder, but still of, of considerable potency of the blood. For Before sure. we left. The older vampires get, the stronger we get. I feel like you should know I've that. I've seen time. enough movies to. Yeah, I mean. so being 100 years old. <laughs> That's like... I assume interview like with a, a vampire like a, is real. All oh, those pocket monsters when they get... Well... Do, 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 do. <laughs> that yeah. basically happened to him, sort of. Okay. It's like the next step. So he's sort of. super powerful. Yeah. And when I asked you what's going to make this job hard... You didn't mention that. That wasn't one of the... Well, to be fair, I, I, I presumed that you would discover his, his resting place, wherever it was in the ship. You would open the trunk that we gave you. You would read the instructions. We did that. Feed the, the vitae of the order, prisoner, yeah. of, the, of the cannibal prisoner, to Mr. Gravenstein, and he would awake. And I presumed, I don't, I, I don't know what's happened. Invite us all to his birthday party? What? <laughs> all, all, I know is that, all I know is that he is not with you, and you are not with him. So I don't really know what happened So you didn't think it next. out. Yeah. Well, I, I th- the plan was that his hunger, great as it was, would be slaked by the meal that we provided, and a dangerous criminal of Camarilla's... Mm, a dangerous criminal that we would like to be rid of would be gone. That was the plan. Well, it didn't slake it. Yeah. It did not. No, there was a ton of slake still left. He was still thirsty. Oh, he was slaking Incredibly. like crazy. I see. That's un- mm-hmm. unex- unanticipated. W- w- what happened then? Uh, you want this one? Yeah, uh, well, we, um, you know, the rebels that you said may also be a problem. The anarchs, yes. Yes. Uh, well, um, we sort of locked ourselves in a room and just let him take care of it. <laughs> let him take care of it? I, I would I'm say afraid skill- I don't understand. No, we very skillfully hid. Tender, gingerly hid in a, in a room. Allowed <laughs> one problem to deal with the other problem, which was a tactical decision and not an act of cowardice. Yeah. It was Tom's idea. I mean, it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was. Uh, as a, if, if I understand correctly, you, you roused Mr. Gravenstein from torpor. Mm-hmm. Correct. And then, uh, while concealing yourselves, you allowed Mr. Gravenstein to confront 
Are you saying that there were anarchs Liqui- aboard the ship? Liquefied. Yeah, yeah I, I would say don't say think confront is fair. I, I would Obliterate. Say, yeah, it was sort of. Um, oh, I see. Have you seen Fargo? Yeah, I, I love the Coen it's, Brothers movies. It's yeah, it's, it's like the it's like Fargo, but more blood. Uh, is what we. Uh, I see. Well, as a as a as a tactical choice, uh, Mr. Hollandaise, then I must congratulate you. Brilliant. Well, I mean, all night everybody had a lot That's of great a, ideas, and we, I thought we did a really good job of making sure that everybody's ideas got enough credit and got That's, used. This is this is great news. This is terrific. You uh, eliminated uh, an anarch coterie, an anarch pack, mm-hmm. and you uh, have disposed of a known criminal, uh, and you completed your mission by waking up. Uh, Mr. Gravenstein, who unfortunately is is nowhere. You don't know where he is. I think that if rather he, thought he would didn't go with you. <laughs> I think that if he didn't want us to find him, I suspect. I mean, understanding the history up to this point, I I think that not being found is something of a specialty for Mr. Gravenstein. He uh, he did manage to conceal his whereabouts from us for for some time for a couple of decades I think he's and, been concealed. and I knock on the the wall that adjoins six and seven just mm-hmm. ge- just gently and yeah I think, what do you want pipe down Drew I'm busy over here ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh. and I and I say how does all this figure in oh um uh, Mr Remy next door. Uh, uh, is uh, an anarch, uh, a pack leader, a leader of a coterie. Um, oh, and, so some, uh, I, so some anarchs are perfectly acceptable to you. The anarchs you can use as cat's paws, perhaps, but the ones on the ship can be liquefied. Well, I dare say the same fate awaits Mr. Remy at some point. Fair enough. Uh, Miss Odette is, um, mm, she's a hound. It's not very nice. I yeah, thought she was an attractive woman. That's rude. That's. I don't know how old I, she no, is. No, 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 no. You misunderstand me. She looks like she worked yeah, out. She up. serves the sheriff. Yeah, she is an enforcer. The Camarilla has a number of, shall we say, um, well, really, for lack of a better word, officers. And many cities have um, you know, a structure of governance. Often there is a prince. A leader of of our of our faction mm-hmm. in the city, just like Prince Prince Alec Cross is the the head of our faction in Alec. In, um, <laughs> Got the name out of you in Seattle, and um, <laughs> here in Tacoma, Odette is part of the structure of this city. She serves the sheriff. I see. So the the concerns that uh, Remy had are uh, beyond correct. That the actions of the Camarilla did, in fact, um, result in the destruction of his allies. It certainly seems that way. So why is he getting beat up? Mr. Remy is in possession of some information that it would be useful for us to have. Mm. And he has proven reluctant to share. Well, yes, I, that much is clear. Have you ever heard the phrase, you catch more flies with honey? I have, in fact. Have you thought about covering him with honey? Bearing up mm. to his neck in the desert. No, that really that strategy hadn't occurred to me. So letting the flies feast on him. Mm. As a. So you are only a tattoo artist. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of YouTube. Oh, question. okay. Me too. I, I trust Miss Odette to do what must be done. Ow! Ooh! Shit! <laughs> so uh, I look at Betty and I say, "What's next?" Well. Talk about. So first of all, not sorry for the little. Well, I'm not sorry, but the little misunderstanding that we had. I'm happy that that is resolved. Yes, absolutely. However, I do think some recompensation. Ah, we've reached. We've is reached. The, we've reached the boon phase. Yes, because not only mm, terrific have we dealt with a bit of your anarch problem. We have some information regarding another party that was interested in Mr. Gravenstein that we may be able to trade for you. Now, as I understand it, this wasn't a job. This was punishment for the Montreal... Scenario. Scenario. And we are now in good standing with the Camarilla, as far as I see. Certainly that was the offer. The suggestion seems to have taken him aback 
all afresh. You should be excited. You can see the mental gymnastics happening acids. in his skull. <laughs> they're, they're audible. I, I feel compelled to agree. He, his eyes dart once to the, the phone apparatus. Oh, yes. She should be worried. I think the reason she doesn't want to see me again is she knows that. Or who knows that. Right? That's what she knows. She knows that. You know. we, all, we, we all know it. Yes. But, I, but yeah. we know yeah. it so, so we can well, say it out loud. We need <laughs> no, no, in fact. That I could it, be vying it, for her seat. Oh, uh, right. Mm-hmm. Well, we all know that. That's Allow probably me. why she doesn't like I, me. Mm, I'm mm-hmm. assuming she's the shit. Wait. Yeah, is she the sheriff here? <laughs> Fiorenza? If he were drinking, he would choke. Um, no, Miss Fiorenza Sabona is far from... Um, she is one of the luminaries of the Ventru clan. She is, is responsible for the liberation of Mexico City from the Sabat faction. She mm-hmm. engineered that vile sect, that cult's downfall in the city of Mexico, its capital. And she is, is held in, in considerable regard at the very upper echelons. I do not know what her particular personal interest is in this matter, but I advise you not to cross her, nor, nor refer to her as a sheriff. She is, oh, she's, I am very new. Listen. Her arm is I've oh. never really cared Ew. about your Ew. inner politics. I'm very new to this. As long as you have stayed out of my hair, I have stayed out of yours. Now, that may have changed. Over the past couple of decades. Well, then, as a, a I don't as know a representative of the Camarilla, allow me to offer you what is within the limits of my authority. It would be my pleasure to offer you probationary membership in our faction. Are you authorized to do so? I am. Because, no offense, it seems a little bit out of your pay grade. I understand so have- that you may feel that way, but I assure you that this is within the limit of my, my remit. Do you want to see if he's... Are you, are you, you're, you seem to be questioning his truthfulness like again. Do you want to try again to see if he's I feel lying? like he's kind of like... He's like, wh- like a kindred notary or something? Yeah. Like- I feel like he's just trying to save his own skin a little bit. Mm. All right. But even, let's, even um, pretending to do it would be dangerous. Yeah. Like that's the thing about it. Yeah. Is that it's such a weird flex if he can't do it. Because offering that's dangerous, right? Yeah, no, I agree. There's some truth to that. If you want to see if he's uh, lying, we can try the roll again. Uh, uh, Pierce, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So uh, well, once again, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's wits and insight. Oh, you got your own. Yeah, when, yeah when, when they come out of the case. Yeah, I know. That's how I you thought know. it was my lucky case. Ugh. Oh. Oh no! Oh god! Can you beat my I just one? Saw, <laughs> what does okay. that mean? Well, uh, it, they're not all failures, so the we're roll good. is not a failure. Well, okay. that's, these are bestial crits, though, right? No, no, no. That's so, the opposite. This is a bestial failure. Failure, yeah. but if, they only if, count if you don't right. have any success. If the oh, whole okay. roll was a failure, oh, if there I were you were no just onks get at all, hungry and that would be that would be a bestial <laughs> failure, and mm-hmm. Mr. Drew would probably be for the chop. Uh, if those were fangs, the red dice were fangs, it would be a messy critical, and he would be in equal danger. But uh, the roll is a success with two successes, which beats my one, so you have a margin of one. Mm-hmm. You think that Mr. Drew doesn't like it, but he is telling you the truth. He can do this. He just, he just resents it. It's a club membership. Mm-hmm. So I will, I will offer you this. I will provide you with uh, a guarantee of safe passage to an event that is occurring tomorrow night um, at the Tacoma Glass Museum where the representatives of our kindred government of Tacoma are meeting. You would be free to present yourselves there as members of the Camarilla and make yourselves known to the court. Uh, we call it a court. Um, I bet so you it's do. like a governing party. And um, you would be free to seek <laughs> uh, patrons, if you so choose, for your, your further um, developments. Uh, yeah, developments. Um, and in addition, I am authorized to provide you with a substantial sum of monetary recompense, if that is your desire. Money. Cash. 
That's my desire, but I don't want to be in your stupid club. I don't need a card or anything like that. I see. Um, well, uh, why don't you discuss it amongst yourselves, and um, I'll just um, take my coat back. <laughs> Puts it on. It is at this point, gunshots ring out from number seven next door, and bullets tear through the wall that separates the two units. It is also an appropriate time to take a, no. a short what? break. No! What? No! What? Oh no! <laughs> ah! It's all falling apart. <laughs> really. Welcome back to Seattle by Night, our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, episode three. And we too are in media race, right in the middle of the Maison scene. <laughs> really? <laughs> really, in the middle if, of the if, scene. If you want to, you know, hey. In the middle of the action. I'm just, I'm just trying to. Uh, elevate things. Listen, elevate I'm, things, I'm, right? I'm with you. Mm -hmm. It's a vampire after all. <laughs> so, uh, shots rang out and bullets slammed through the rather thin and ineffectual wall separating motel units six and seven. What is your reaction? Mr. Drew throws himself on the floor. Yeah. What about Tom? Uh, I assume I'm not hit. You are unhurt. Right. The bullets tear through the room and they strike the opposite wall. They probably go three or four motel units down before this uh, is in place. But there's so much Tom. Like what I like is that Tom is like, is like I'm going to get hit or something. Yeah. But like Tom is fine. Yeah. Even though he's easily <laughs> the best target. Uh, I would good. throw myself down on the ground too. Hit the dirt. Yeah. I also hit the dirt. Amanda hits the dirt. What about Betty? How large is the hole the bullet hole came through? Well, let's keep in mind that these walls are, uh, you know, made out of almost nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe size of a size of a quarter. I'm, oh, size of a quarter. Yeah. I'm gonna go Jeez. look through the peephole. You're gonna step to the wall and look through. Mm -hmm. What about Jameson? <laughs> Um, I guess they wouldn't shoot through the same bullet <laughs> yeah, hole. Yeah, right. Where the chances? That's I'm willing to look through, to and you're looking down it. a barrel. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. take this bet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is our front door open? Uh, you closed it uh, when okay. you came in. It shouldn't be hard to get back open. She's very. You can easily step to the door and open. Exactly. It. I'm going to step to the door, and when I open it, like in the in the movie version of this, mm -hmm. like go down? on the inside, he reaches over. Listen, an instant. He's like, "Well, this has gone wrong." <laughs> uh, reaches over to the door <laughs> and I'm out. Twists it and then opens it. But when the camera is on the other side of the door, there's no one there. Basically, <gasps> he vanishes. Yeah, he Dang. goes away. Yeah. Are you using Vanish? I am using the Vanish ability. Okay, so uh, one rouse check because the power you're, you're augmenting is Get the rouse, unseen dude. passage. So I have done so well for so long yeah. not being hungry. Here yeah. we go. This is going and to, and it's a policy I'm going to maintain. Take my energy. Uh, <laughs> I hate you, to be you know what? To tell you, you know what this. it is? It's because I gave you my energy. Yeah, and my it's energy a dark is dark energy. It is. Yeah, you should have taken it. Um, I honestly wanted the worst to happen, so. I was, I was <laughs> counteracting. I was rooting against you. Yeah. To be honest, is your energy? <laughs> this dice tray. Why say that out loud? That's really. <laughs> this dice tray is like a cauldron for yeah. all of your weird <laughs> feelings. It One is. could say a crucible, even. Mm -hmm. One, One might could say that. that. Yeah. No. Uh, Talk so about I get, I get hungry. Right? Dialogue. Mm -hmm. I get hungry. But you I do get hungry. But I hear that nagging, annoying it. little voice in the back of your head. The one you always. Uh, uh, she's so irritating. She's so grating. Great uncle. Great uncle, you know, you know you deny yourself everything. You care for everybody else to your own detriment. You are so good to everyone oh, this except is a yourself. Good tack. Your, your own needs you neglect. This is a good tack. I, I insist that you prioritize your own well-being for yeah. once, uncle, and do the thing that sustains you. Please, for me, Ah, uh, it's, it's Insidious the Beast. So it, does every there. character have a different beast? Because your yeah. beast was not that mm, beast. No. Everybody uh, had a different beast. Betty hears the voice of her sire when her beast's hunger is yeah. raised. And Jameson hears the voice of someone else from his past. Amanda hears the voice of her father. And who knows? Who Tom? Yeah, yeah. I guess Tom hasn't gotten, haven't found out yet. We'll get there. Have that was out. a really good tack. Hmm. Okay. Despite the fact that the beast I just is set, aroused, you I do just vanish. Set my, just like Bam. set my teeth and uh, come out and then close the door behind close you. Close the door behind you. 
All right, you are invisible in the night. Betty, what you see when you press your eye to the, the, uh, the bullet hole, uh, things have gotten out of hand next door. Um, Odette is sprawled out on the floor of the motel room. She's got uh, a wow. nasty wound at her temple and some vampiric vitae is mm-hmm. leaking down the side of her face. Remy, on the other hand, is standing over her with a pistol. You don't know where he got it from. And maybe it's Odette's. But the chair that he was tied to is in small wooden pieces and the ropes are broken. Uh, he's clearly been the one to fire the pistol. And Odette was probably standing between the wall and him. And he's standing over her with the pistol and he's getting ready to fire again at point blank range at the prone vampire. You can't tell if she's awake or not. That's what you see. This is great. It is. Um, not for us. No. Well, not so much for you. Although, we'll see. You never know. Yeah. yeah. It could be great for you, actually. Yeah. Mr. Drew's response. Chaos of the ladder. Mr. Mr. Drew's response is to crawl it's the backwards army crawl. toward the bathroom. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Through the door oh. that... The open door to the bathroom where presumably there is better shelter. So I would assume that I'm on the floor next to Betty. Mm-hmm. Um, probably at her feet. Yeah, yeah, probably at her feet. You got a good view of her her destroyed, <sighs> expensive shoes. Yeah. 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 It is within my interests to help her because a favor from a hound is good. Well, we've been doubling up on favors, yeah. frankly. It's yeah. been a good night for it's us. It's been a good night. We're making yeah. out well. Pocketbook is looking good. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to try to distract him a little bit, or as he's aiming again, mm-hmm. I'm just going to be like, knowing that, hearing the door open and knowing Jameson's probably, I need to buy Jameson time. Okay. To escape? <laughs> no, to, to, to act. <laughs> to, to go act. home? Yeah. So you want to keep Remy's attention on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. an Uber. How will you do this? How do you want this to go down? Um, I'll say, uh, it wouldn't be wise for you to do that. You're outnumbered and surrounded. Hmm. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Okay. Let's talk. What does Tom do? Why? From his vantage point at the, at so the floor. I, <clears throat> do I still have my heightened senses going? Mm, let's see. Uh, we changed scenes. Okay. So you probably, you probably turn them off, but they cost you nothing to increase them if you want to. Okay. Um, then, yeah, I would like to sort of see what I can sense on the other side of that. Do I smell... Would I smell uh, the, the blood? You can smell a mixture of gunpowder from the gunshots. The, you could probably even smell the oil used yeah. to clean the gun, that weird metallic um, scent. It's yeah, absolutely distinctive. You can smell very faint perfume. Does, does, Betty, does Betty wear perfume? Uh, maybe? No. no, maybe not so much. How about Amanda? Or oh, cologne? She definitely maybe James wears. wears cologne. I'm not sure. Uh, do I do I get the definitely. idea that there are any more people on the other side than, uh, than just the two that I remember? Now so, I like. So your hearing extends obviously into the the, uh, the next door motel room. Uh, you can hear the sound of footsteps, uh, which is Remy moving back and forth in place. Uh, but you do don't have hear help. No. Anybody yeah. else? Uh, all right. You seem like you are pretty confident. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will. I will add my voice to Betty's. Mm-hmm. Um, Back up. And I have. I have awe and daunt. Can you tell me about those? Yes, they're both excellent powers. Um, they're good preparatory powers right now. Awe uh, increases your social roles in the positive side. There, it helps make people like you as a friend oh, and okay. as a trusted. Com- compatriot. Daunt does the reverse. It adds to your intimidation roles and makes people afraid of you. They both have passive effects too. Individuals who are near you and can see you feel those effects right away. They want to help you in the case of awe or they Whether want to I run want away from you. Whether I want to or not, it's not a thing I can... Remy unfortunately can't see you. Right. So okay. he may not and there's a wall between you and him. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't help with my voice if I'm just trying to 
back Actually, her up. that's an interesting point. If mm. you were to activate awe, it, I'm, I'm going to check the rule really quickly, but I think it says it, it adds to all your social roles. Mm. So you, oh. Well, and I also... Yeah, it involves the skill involving persuasion and performance. Yeah, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to rule that it would increase, it would give you bonus dice okay. on your so persuasion Okay, so which side are you going to play it? Are you going to be like, hey, bro... Or are you going to play well, it like, so, listen so up? Well, so Tom has specific um, streetwise knowledge with bikers. Yeah. And it sounded oh, like yes. this guy had, oh, like, oh, leathers yeah. on. He, he did. They, in fact, he and Odette both had leathers and riding boots, so they're bo- they both might be part of that subculture. Do I, did I recognize if he would have been a part of some shitty gang, like... Oh, um, interesting. Well, you recall that he recalled the bad tattoos right. that he had. And you oh, think yes. they might even be prison tattoos? Okay. So um, he doesn't look like uh, he he doesn't look like he belongs to any of the major gangs so that you have known. Tom's just gonna say, "No reason to go back in for this, man. You can be back on your bike tonight." This is oh, awesome. So it's, it's persuasion and not yeah. intimidation. Yeah. So you activate awe, which is free. There's no rouse check involved. You don't have to tempt the beast. Okay. Um, at all. Uh, make a roll of um, manipulation and let's make it your, since it's invoking this yeah, particular thing, two. let's in, let's make it instead of presence. What is your presence? You have one or two dots. In presence? I'm still it's not a, good at your finding natural power. Um, it's going to think. It's going to be in the lower right. Lower right. Where you saw the awe. Oh. oh. It's, it's, two dots. it's two dots in presence. I okay. said yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, add dice for your manipulation. Dice for your presence, and uh, you have uh, streetwise. Streetwise three for three. bikers. Uh, I'm gonna let you add half of that rounded up. So that's two, two. extra dice. Yeah, that's hey. a. That's a and you are not hungry still. So that's a pool and a half. Yeah, yeah. You roll. Uh, oh, four. Four successes. Oh wow, not bad at all. Dang. Yeah. Okay, Amanda, what's your intention in this particular uh, I think sequence? that I am going to. Um, um, I'm gonna kind of like hang in the back. Like I don't really know how I could possibly at this point help, other than like I don't have an intimidation, and I definitely don't want him to kill it. So kill anyone. So mm-hmm. I guess what Amanda would say is, "Don't do it. It's just, it's just really not a good idea. I don't think you should do it." <laughs> um, it's very convincing. And um, is it implied that? These people are all vampires, and so far, um, it, we certainly implied that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Drew identified Odette as a hound, which is definitely a vampire. And yeah. He identified Remy as an anarch, almost right. thousand percent certain. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to double check. No, it's, it's a good question. Sure. It's one of the it's one of the difficult things about being a kindred is you're never sure who's in the club, right? Right. 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 So okay. I, again, I'm out of game. Really sorry. Yeah, Why no do people, words. when they say vampire, act like it's? Ooh, I shouldn't have said vampire. That's a great question oh, for Tom. Oh, to I think ask it, it somebody. must be social. Oh, it's a great yeah. question for Tom to ask. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jameson has left. You're vanished. Are you making your way to? Union I'm making my way seven? downtown. Walk in. Walk fast. in fast. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no. That would be interesting. I thought it was making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Well, that's that's another great, yeah. uh, great way. Uh, if anybody else wonderful. has any other great ones, let's let's jump in. Um, uh, no, I am just I am outside the window to their room mm-hmm. um, with my twenty two out um, and pointed at him, but completely invisible, waiting to see the results of the social. Is the gun invisible? Uh, the gun is ha- in his hand, so yes, it cannot be seen. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, um, the, I'm, just, I'm waiting to see the results. I'm waiting for my results. The, uh, <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the hardest part. It's it a really trying is. time. It really is. It's like a week. Yeah. Just like with the x-ray. we got to wait a few minutes for the, the resolution. Wow. I have to see what develops. Um, the blinds of the of the window are closed, but the light is such that you can actually see the, the silhouette the shadow, the silhouette of Remy and his his gun stance. Yeah. As soon so, as I need to, multiple things happen at once. Uh, Betty encourages Remy to see reason, and for a moment, his his attention does focus on the wall instead of on Odette. And his gun comes up, and you think for a second he's going to fire in your direction and try to shoot you through the wall, but then Tom's voice is added to yours. He mentions not going back in the big house. Remy falters and points the gun up instead, as though that's something to think about. 
you are in position. I'm just, I am just, I am, I, I, so is, do I see a couple motorcycles here? You don't see any other vehicles, as a matter of fact. And then Remy, you can see through the peephole. It takes one last look at Odette, with a look of regret. Holsters the gun in his belt and head towards the door. Mm -hmm. I you. remain completely invisible. Okay. Remy opens the door, and of course he is mere inches from you, invisible, mm -hmm. armed with a gun. He does not see you at all. Yeah, he I just, I just like move, I, I just like adjust myself slightly so that he can pass unimpeded. Mm -hmm. Does Betty watch him leave? Betty sees him go to the door, open it, and step out. Are there, do you have any reaction at that point? No one else other than you and Jameson know that he's left the room. He's been, he's had the brakes beaten off of him. I don't see any point in restraining him. Okay. We saved Odette's life. Yeah, that's the key. So, I don't really, honestly, I don't really have a dog in this race. No, that's what rises, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's, that's what this is about, mm -hmm. is us doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I don't feel bad for him, I don't feel, but I also don't feel like I need to restrain him. No, it's not our thing. job, no, we yeah. weren't paid but, to do that, but so. Also, right. let's, let's be quite clear, his grievance is, is uh, robust. Yeah. Uh, it is They're a, all true. Yeah, it's a, it's a valid for sure. Yeah, so it is honestly, a deeply accurate assessment. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with letting You're him walk. You're okay with letting him stroll. Yeah, all right. I don't care. That's all we needed to know. So yeah. uh, presuming no one stops him, Remy, uh, his gun hidden in his, in his belt now, uh, will look left and right, get, do the big movie back and forth yeah. to make sure he's not being observed. He strolls really quickly in the direction of the Greasy Spoon Diner next door. Nice. That's where he's headed. What a great, yeah, it's like, man, this has been a fucked up night. <laughs> yeah. This blood. I think that moon's man. over my hammy. But he yeah. can't eat. Oh, I love no, that No, no, but he orders it. I love that sandwich. That's his moment. He orders it, and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he leaves. Mm -hmm. Odette is stirring on the floor. Uh, yeah. She clearly wasn't knocked into torpor, but she's mm -hmm. been badly injured. And as she mm -hmm. heaves herself over and under her back, you can see a couple of big bullet holes. Mm -hmm. In her oh, yeah. midsection and in her leg. She's been shot Ooh. several times at close range and she starts to slowly sit up. Fuck. Yeah, here. Ah, so, shit. I, I, I'm, I'm in, in the, I'm just I'm in, in a moment. After he is after he is at the, the place. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. have a name for it? Open the door. No, no, no. Of the of the greasy spoon. Oh, the coyote. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, oh, it's the co I'm sorry, that didn't come up last time. No, did dude, <laughs> does it have like a sign with like the how woo? Oh, it's like, got so it. what it's got is a stylized coyote howling at a moon that just won't light up. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's like trying so it's hard. Like, There's no moon to howl at. <clears throat> yeah, no, the coyote. I'm, I am, I am in in an instant. The You're door opens into Odette's room in the, number seven. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. She uh, she tries to she flinches. She reacts. She thinks it's and, Remy come back no, to no, finish and, the and job. I, in, and in a second, ready to spring at you. But it, it's just it's ah. just in a second. It's just it's just me again. Do you let her? Is it better? Do you let her see you? Yeah, absolutely. Ah! Who the hell are you? Yeah, <clears throat> it's like I'm with. Uh, I'm ah, with the rest of the people. God, fight. we gotta get him. We gotta get him. Do we? Where is he? Uh, he's he's yeah, he's so fast. I don't know. I think he's, <laughs> he's gone. No, he took off like into, a shot. He turned into, <laughs> and I thought this was Utre. He turned into like a hundred bats, and I was like, oh, shit, really? Oh. Yeah, I was like, now? Okay. Oh. Um, I fucking hate That's Gangrel. I hate yeah, that clan. I hate that clan. No, and listen. There's there's oh. obviously there's nothing to love about these creatures. But, I hate Gangrel. But what I'm, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that, madam, we must take stock. She's standing up slowly and looking at the bullet wounds, and she's, she, she takes a breath she doesn't need to take, as though to steal herself. And one of the biggest wounds begins to slowly close. Oh. And she made a roll. Knit together. She's about to make a yeah. hung, a round. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, is she gonna get hungry? Amanda, as a matter up. of fact, <laughs> oh, no. her fangs. Descend and she licks her lips. Oh, I hate it when they shoot me. <laughs> I don't know where he got the gun. He must have had it in his boot or something. I don't Gangles, know. Gangrels, right? I hate it when they shoot me. <laughs> hey, she she calls out. Hey, hey, Drew, we got a runner. We gotta get this oh, guy. Oh yeah, he crawled away. He uh, gets to his I think feet. He's the bathroom. And dusts <laughs> yeah. his pants mm -hmm. off and like ha ha. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, he came out on top of this one. What is unfortunate is the spectacle you've made of yourself, Mr. Drew. <sighs> I admit it hasn't Crawling been my, on the floor, my not very night. becoming a Vittoriador. 
Hasn't been my best night. No, sir. Maybe it's time for you to call it. You look like shit. Thanks. Appreciate it. Wait, so he was on the floor with his nice jacket Mm. in the bathroom. It's no longer very nice at all. No. In the fir trees bathroom. (laughs) Bathroom of the fir tree motel next door to the coyote. I have a I have a dry cleaner. They're magic. Like I use them for all the things. Mm. I can get you the phone number. Yeah, can will they give me a discount? Uh no. <laughs> no, no, well, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Is he gone? Did he get away? Yeah. So how many? Yeah, yeah he got away. How many? This is terrible. How many times are we going to solve problems for you tonight? Like, mm. I don't have a good answer to that. Just, good question. It's. I feel like it's a. I feel like it's it's fair. Before we were talking about uh, ticks, as the youth are common uh, commonly known to say, to an event, a soiree. Uh, oh, technically, they would all be soirée <laughs> for uh, for us. It's a, it's a but it is a it is a rather uh, uh, it's a substantial social event. Indeed, and oh, money. Is soirée a party at night? Indeed. <laughs> yes, Thomas, that is correct. Uh, now no, that was Mike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, a soirée? No, exactly. And uh, he says, uh, we were talking about the soirée. We were talking about a substantial sum of In money. Cash, And yes. that was before. Oh, God. That was before. Oh, my cuffs. The events of the last three minutes. What exactly happened? Uh, Odette... Uh, has actually left yeah. number seven and come into number six. She's expelled one of the slugs, which she's tossing up and down in her hands. Nice. This is a very cool uh, thing to do. Yeah. Uh, she's busy, she's busy, busy trying to heal the wound in her gut. Doesn't get hungry, though. Hey, uh, I don't know. Was that, was that you shouting? Who was shouting through the wall? We tag teamed it. Appreciate it. I shouted. Mm-hmm. Totally appreciate that. Got his attention <laughs> off me. Um, Appreciation you know? isn't worth a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Fair. I feel like I should make that clear. Also, I'll take it. Hey, uh, you were very scathing <laughs> earlier, so maybe you should do better to mind your p's and q's around me. Oh, you can see her swallow that with Ugh. bile. Good. It burns her throat <laughs> to keep it down. <sighs> Thanks. I was happy to help. It looked Appreciate like you needed a, a tag team uh, partner there. You know, I came in off the right surprise. Yeah, he must have, because you seem like you know your shit. He busted open the, the he broke the ropes, he wrecked the chair, he got a gun from somewhere. I, I swear my dude searched him. I don't know what was going on there. Hmm. Well, you know, those gangrel have pretty interesting places of hiding oh, things like yeah. that. I also understand you think he keistered it? I understand that he did spend he was, some time in prison. You? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did you know that he was a uh, jailbird? I mean, uh, he isn't now. Oh, the garbage ink. Yeah, I could tell right away. It looked oh, like it was no shit. done by some, you know, guy who was in there for murder. Good eye. Not a real artist. I mean, there's no real danger of him being sent back into the, the pokey now, but I, you, you spooked him for sure. So I was trying to do, and I knew that. I knew that he couldn't go back. It, it was, I was, it's 40 chess. I feel I I feel I owe you. You do? Yeah. I feel I owe you. I feel you do too. Yeah. I owe you a favor. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Mr. Drew (laughs) looks like this night can't possibly get (laughs) any worse. Mm, Certainly can't. That's between Odette, you, and them. Uh, it's you that's a personal issue. So if you feel that you owe them a boon, then of course. Can I get Odette's like a card? Um, yeah, I'll give you my digits now. I don't, you can text me. Um, if you call me, I won't answer. I don't call they, who calls. They, they listen, you know. <laughs> Nobody calls. And, and when you text I me. Call. Really? I can't text. I get so mad when a person calls me. I'm sorry, I'm going to call you. No. I, I only have <laughs> a landline and I can't really. If someone calls, I assume a person has died. Well, I kind of have to get used to it, Tom. Or they're quite old. Yeah. Well, maybe I can have someone text you for me. Yes. Hire someone to text. I can I can do that. Thank you. Now she's got two slugs. <clears throat> nice trick. So oh. I'm going to give you one of these, and that's your marker. Oh, one of the slugs? Yeah. Ha! Ah, that's cool. That's your marker. That represents the boon I owe you. Okay. Oh. God help me. <sighs> 
Like very, you just like see it disappear. You don't know where it, where yeah. it's gone, but she has it. So when you text me, mm-hmm. for the love of, don't mention the V word. In fact, don't mention the V word at all. Don't. Why say, can't we say Voldemort? It's not polite. Okay. We we it's Mr. Drew adds. We call ourselves the kindred. Doctor Drew, you can shut up. I'm talking to Odette Dude. right now. Well, he's right. Oh. I mean. Kindred, lick. I mean, there's, there's connotations from popular culture associated with the word vampire. Oh, that, that, is it like a slur? You know, it's, it's a little too close for comfort for some of the elders. They don't like it. We you thought know, about reclaiming it? My, my, my mm. fang bangers, we just call each other licks or, or fangies or. What about vamp? You know, some people. I've been referred to as vampy. Think that would and be weird. I, you know, I don't think it's, it's very nice. Amanda. Yes. Perhaps it's time for young kindred to consider a rebranding effort. Uh, what are some words? What are some words that, that resonate with the youth? Exactly. <laughs> so what are some? What are some terms that you think might be appropriate? I submit V dogs. Oh, oh, I like V dog. V dog, I like it. That's awesome. Huh? V dogs. Um, v dog with a W. The, um, oh, the the W is, is vital. Yeah, just like the the college mascot. Same. What about um, go V dogs? Bang, bangers. Fang fangs. No, we already have bang that. people. Fang fang. That's kind of kind of frou frou. Like fang. Oh, uh, I don't maybe. know. I like maybe. it. Maybe. I mean, I like it. But, uh, yeah. Perhaps when referring to our business. Uh, the business that we uh, that we undertake together, we could call it our Fang Fang. Our Fang <laughs> Gang. You're all that's all Godfather. Well, that's already hers. Right. I do like the Fang Gang. Hey, what the hell's fang wrong with gang. your hand? What's wrong with your hand? Oh, I, I was I. There's this trap that. Trap. Uh, yeah. I, there's this trap that I, well, triggered. I am, and it. It burned me. Actually, burned I thought me. you disarmed it. No that. shit. I, this has uh, been a night of incredible. Uh, I wish I had disarmed it. Uh, Complexity. I tried, but I couldn't. Um, and it, it hurt me pretty bad, honestly. Uh, wow. But I, I, uh, wow. It hurt Badass. Quite, quite a bit. Like, like, hanging like limp. It, fucked up. Like forever. It yeah. Was, uh, it was a bad, yeah, I had a really bad time. But uh, so much was happening that um, it, it kind of, I wasn't able to talk about it. But yeah, uh, it, do you know what? Any of this is? I've never uh, seen any of this before. Fucked if I know. Mm. Oh, okay. Badass though. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Are you are you trying to get rid of it now? Are no, you are I you doing keep the it. are you doing the I, thing? I would not heal it. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna heal it. I, just take I, I wanna keep it. it as like take a picture of it. You know, you memories of this, you know, it's really nice. But you like, can't keep it, right? Well, I mean you can mm-hmm. you can never if you don't make it go away, you're gonna be hurt for the rest of whatever, right? Oh you well, can keep okay. it and just have the pain. We'll just have yeah. the... Hmm. Consider the work of Mr. Hollandaise. Uh, there are those who suffer for art. Yeah. So, I think uh, oh, this group is worth keeping a memento. Gestures at Mr. Drew, you one of them. I am a Toreador, sir. Wow. Or ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm dead. Don't I don't mean, like to judge. Don't mean shit to me. Yeah, <laughs> same I'm here. All, I'm all dead and stuff. So do, yeah. you, not, do you not spend a... Uh, portion of, I mean, certainly I don't attend any of the Nosferatu meetings. Do you spend any equality time with uh, other Toreadors? Absolutely. They're my people. Really? Mm-hmm. Artists. Hmm. Like-minded individuals. Maybe yeah. We'll Appreciate the too. beauty in the world. Drink. Oh. Yeah, okay. heavily. Wow. I know who you can ask about that. Really? Yeah. Who? Yeah, there's a dude named Kennedy. Kennedy? Yeah, he's a... Uh, well, Kennedy be in attendance at this uh, event. Swaro. Are uh, you guys coming to Elysium? Oh, yes. Oh, is that you what it's know? called? Whoa. You know it's us. been a very long time. Uh-huh. Awesome. I've ever been invited. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna like this place. <laughs> it's a club? No, it's at the it's at the art it's at the glass museum oh. downtown. Uh, it's a beautiful glass sculptures or some of them are really awesome. Oh, that does sound good. Yeah, really cool. Um, but um, all the movers and shakers will be there for sure. Perfect. It's um, is he like new, fresh? Oh wow, that's adorable. Um, Elysium is uh, is neutral ground. No neutral. violence is permitted, 
and everybody is welcome. Glass Switzerland. Who's powerful enough to enforce a neutral zone? My boss. The sheriff? Yeah, you'll meet him. Okay. But Kennedy will be there, probably. Ken okay. Kennedy's, um, Kennedy's a Tremere, but he's okay. He, but he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. Okay. Yeah, he knows all about weird magic fire trap doodads and shit. So you know I'm a Tory door. I'm, I'm a Tremere. Yeah. What They wanted me to be a, Cam a Camaro. Camaro? <laughs> yeah. I had a Camaro once. They were trying to get me to be a Camaro. My dad has a Camaro. It, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. it's cool. Yeah. What's huh. the difference like between what they want me to become yeah. and what I am? Like, I already thought I had a clan. You do have a clan. You're Toreador. Yeah, so why do they want me to be a Camilla? Oh, yeah, I see. So fig figure, figure, it, figure it like this, right? <laughs> um, and this is kind of unusual. I'm a member of the Bruja clan, and there aren't many of us in the Camarilla. Most of us did the big walkout a while ago for reasons. A whole bunch of shit. But, I, but uh, my sire and I stayed. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is think about it like this. Your clan is your... You're an American, right? Mm -hmm. That's your clan. But maybe you're a member of the Red Hot Chili Pepper Party. Like a political party. Clan, oh. uh, the, 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 the faction or the sect. Some of the old elders call it a sect. It's like a political party. Um, it's a bunch of us licks who all sort of believe in the same point of view and how to get things done and agree to a bunch of rules to, you know, regardless our of your clans. Regardless of your clans. So in in the, in the Camarilla, I think mm -hmm. that's what you actually meant. Yes. In the Camarilla, it's a weird word. It's Spanish. It means little room, secret. Oh. Camarilla, or whatever. Um, so while he's talking, so uh, you'll find a lot Maida of has her She's yeah, like yeah. furiously <laughs> making notes. She's like, is she, is she highlighting all that. She's parts? recording it, but she's still not trying to act like a noob. So she's just kind of like, very interesting. Just adding to my journal. Mm. Poems. Yes, poems. Yeah. You find a lot of Ventru. They kind of run the show, and uh, you find a lot of Toreador. Hmm. Uh, you find a lot of Tremere, um, and a fair amount of Nosferatu as well. Um, and then the other clans, the other great clans, you find less of them. Um, most of my clan, like I said, did the big walkout. Um, Gangrel left a while ago. Oh, you do find a fair number of Malkavians, though. They give me the creeps. How many of these political parties are there? Uh, three or four big ones. Okay. Big so ones. you got us. She gestures at the night where Remy has run off somewhere. Anarchs, the Anarch movement. <laughs> 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 they're so highbrow about it. Yeah. Bullshit. Like they're just really sticking it to the man it's by joining bullshit. another man. <laughs> so silly. My oh. clan yeah. is all about tearing down the status quo and questioning authority and fighting the power, but even I know that's chaos and you know complete anarchy is bullshit. There is ways to rebuild from within the structure and make a better night for everybody. I know that, my sire knows it, know. all my all my broodmates know it. Uh, brothers and sister licks. Uh, so okay. I don't know who made you, but that, uh, geez, I almost God said it. Me. That kindred <laughs> might have made others. And so you would have brother and sister licks. Oh, you know? it hadn't occurred to me. Yeah, you might not be an only V-dog. Hmm, that's already catching on. I've, I've already okay. discarded it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, come to the Elysium. Uh, you'll meet a bunch of bunch of the Camarilla. You might meet some Anarchs. They're welcome too, unfortunately. Um, even the Sabbat is welcome. And dude, you want no? No, we met Sabbat. These are the want them. animals that live in the sewer. That is bad mojo. I mean, some of them are like oh, kind you? of reforming their ways. It depends. Like it, you know. I only met the but, sewer but ones. They're, they've begun the sewer crossfit. ones are pretty terrible. Yeah. But, what does that mean? You My, would say that. You know, I noticed that you very interestingly evaded mentioning my clan in front of my friends, which yeah. I don't appreciate. Yeah. La Sombra. What's that mean? Well, La it's a Spanish word <laughs> meaning <laughs> the shadow. Oh, La you've Sombra. Seen that I trick. didn't see the shadow. So, history lesson, right? So, a long time ago, the La Sombra. The La Sombra. The La Sombra clan. <laughs> the La Sombra clan decided not to join up with the Camarilla 
or the Anarch movement, and they went off with some other licks, other clans, and they made their own political party, their own faction. It was called the Sabbat, and a more oh horrific, devil-worshipping, Whoa! Evil bunch of you know dogs. What? Clearly, I'm not Sabat. So if you're trying to get under my skin, you're failing to do so. You're not Camarilla either. I am sort of. I vote independent in the election. <laughs> I like that. Right. How long oh. is that going to last? Now you can see why I kind of want to. You're going to have to pick yeah. a side it's eventually. Been tough. Yeah. It's been a tough few years. You're new to this. Both of you are new to this. But as somebody who's Sometimes you want to come in from the cold. I hear a lot of shit went down with your clan in Chicago. A lot of uh, a lot of crossovers. Uh, uh, yeah. Collaborations, mixtapes, perhaps. <laughs> Man, I haven't had a good mixtape. It's been a while since I've even seen a cassette. Isn't it fun to change the subject? Listen. Yeah. Are you happy or sad that he has begun to discuss you with more specificity? Well. I don't know. I make a very pronounced stretch like this, and then I yawn, but it's not real, and the jaw comes down so low. <sighs> <sighs> Nobody wants to see that, dude. Oh, God. Hey. Ah. <sighs> Listen, I'm surprised you didn't have, uh, I hear you guys met Gravenstein. He's kind of a legend, Nas. Uh, yeah, I locally. I, 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 have, I have some of his early records. Listen, <laughs> I I didn't know he laid down any track. Well, this yeah, is awesome. Absolutely. Oh, this is the best night. I'm glad I met you. Odette, it's an yeah. absolute pleasure. I'm glad that you have exchanged uh, digits with my associates here. Uh, I have no doubt uh, that problems will be solved forthwith. Um, I feel like uh, I'm ready. To leave. Yeah, I mean, it must be just about time for the sun, right? Yeah, she she checks uh, she checks her wristwatch, which uh, is an old Timex with a, a nice. beat up leather band. Oh, hell yes! Yeah, you, you like it? Watch. No, it's awesome. Oh, it I takes do a like it and keeps on ticking. Absolutely, right? It's important in my biz. Look, I got to report into my boss. We got to figure out if we can catch up to you know cloth head, never see him again. bonehead dude that went out of, out of here. Um, yeah, he's gone. God, I don't know, man. Just bats. Yeah. It's terrible. I don't know what we're going to do. Straw for brains ran out. What exactly, what information did he have that you guys needed? They got an op going down we've heard whispers about. The Anarchs do? Yeah, we want to we wanna know about it. We're not sure what exactly is going on, but there's been some chatter. Why do they want... Uh, why do they want this NOS? That's a good question. Um, we got a leak. Right, I'm a telling lick. you that. I'll tell you. It's slick. No, 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 leak. I'll tell oh, you that for oh, free be before we jet. Um, Drew over there, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Fashion Plate. He's got a lint roller out now. He's just yeah. desperately trying <laughs> to, to de dirt himself. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he told you there were other interested parties or some, you know, pompous verbal diarrhea like that. We saw some yeah. evidence of that. All right, so we got a leak. Um, you know, obviously, the Anarchs knew about Gravenstein, so they tried to get to him first. Um, it's, it's the, the ship isn't tight. Oh, it definitely who. isn't. There was a Giovanni who knew exactly who we were, exactly where we were going. A what the what? A Giovanni. A who the, hey, what? Well, you were just discussing Chicago, I assume, maybe. Oh, you mean a clan Giovanni? Yes. I mean, I, you hear things, but I never met one. Why? What's so rare about them? Oh, I hear weird shit. They have like a bit of a, a, no offense to Amanda, like a bit of a cultish thing going on. Is that, that's how I would describe it. Is Amanda it. in a cult? Well, well do, we need, do we need an intervention? I don't know. I don't think I'm in a cult. <laughs> that sounds like something a cultist would say. Well, like looking down a mirror thinking, can sometimes be oh, a little bit. Are, are, are you maybe like all oh. church cane and everything? No. I mean, I don't mind it. I, I don't. I mean, Tremere just seemed like... Oh, fuck. Just, <laughs> <laughs> you just picked it off the list. <laughs> well, it just... They 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 seemed nice. Yeah. I mean, in that they talked to me. About How can you be them. a Tremere and not know what that doodad is? Um, 
You know, there's just some, there's some like lapse in. I don't want to know. I'll okay. live longer, happier on life if I don't know any more about this. Okay. Will I see you f- folks tomorrow night at the Elysium? Well, oh, yeah. I understand. I'll be there. I understand mm-hmm. it's I love the a good place party. to be. Yeah. Oh, it's boring as shit, but you know, you can make a lot of good deals there and meet a lot of important licks. I'm, I'm happy to show you around. Marvelous. Dressed, uh, attired thus. I got to clean up a bit. You know, I have to say, <laughs> you need to work on your first impression, but you're growing on me, darling, and that's very rare. I can't tell mm-hmm. you how excited I am to hear that. Mm-hmm. It, is, it, is, <laughs> it is as though the History Channel became a bipedal creature and then walked around, and it's not a bad thing. I'm okay with it. So can I um, see the coyote from, like, if I were to look out the window, can I see the coyote? Absolutely. You can see that greasy spoon diner over there. There's uh, maybe half a dozen vehicles parked in front of it. A couple of them are big rigs. Do I see if the guy that went over there is, like, sitting at the bar? Well, what you can see, uh, especially if you use heightened senses and give yourself that great telescoping vision across the way, you see a big plate glass window through which there is a very tired wait staff pouring coffee and serving pie and 24-hour breakfast to the patrons and nachos. And And nachos. And nachos. But I don't see the anarch. So you're you're, you're, you're looking at the booths and the tables and the counter... Um, I love this you so much. do, in fact, see Remy. He is seated at the counter at the very far end, and he is talking into a cell phone. Unfortunately, the distance is too sure. great, even for your hearing, to discern what he is saying, but he is very animated. You might even say um, frantic sure. in his discussion. Yeah, no, I, I'm actually going to leave. But, Depart. But, but, but exactly, because it, it's time, and I mean, I, I have a thing tomorrow. You know what I mean. Um, hey, see, you guys got a safe place to sleep tonight. Oh. Yeah. Oh, to be sure. You do. You're all set. You're all hooked up. To be sure. Okay. Yeah. I know that I do. Oh, and Tom can come stay with me. All right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. But I'm just I saying, I just want to let this happen. I want to let whatever you're going to do happen, but it can be, I don't need to be a part of it. Oh, well, I mean, I thought everybody should know, except for Odette. Yeah. Like, so if, we're all, if we all leave... So yeah. have you de- let's say that you have departed yeah, yeah. Motel uh, right Room Right before we six. leave, I look at Mr. Drew and I go, I'll send you my receipts for the shoes that were ruined. So <laughs> you'll have that. Terrific, Miss Booker. Please, please, please do. Yes. And gas money. Please keep an itemized... <laughs> yeah, Miles. <laughs> yeah, Miles. Uh, Mr. Keene, he calls out as you depart. Um, at Elysium tomorrow, let's arrange for the transfer of the funds that we owe you. Yes. Oh, yes, all of them. Drew. Oh, oh, you. Did you want that box back that the guy was in? You didn't bring it back. I hope it wasn't a big deal. What exactly did you leave on the ship? The box and the See, No, it just occurred to him. We did, what we did is drop the box in the water accidentally where it sank all the way to the bottom. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, are, are there remnants of the um, victims? Left? Well, the victims themselves no. uh, deteriorated, as I'm sure you understand, quite quickly. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to send a cleanup crew. Smart. Tomorrow morning. Smart. In the morning. Yeah. Uh, not me personally, but rate. one will be sent. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. If they see the box there, someone probably got it out of the water and brought it and put it back in the boat. I see. Hmm. Well, yeah, it'd be I did, weird. I did see someone like watching. I will this. arrange for yes. a, a, a detail of uh, its employees to take it's care of it. It's not as uncommon as you think. It happens. Yeah. Hmm. Well, this has been More a very interesting evening. I wish you all well, and uh, we will see you tomorrow night. The Tacoma Glass Museum. Uh, midnight sharp. Yeah. Please... Um, He looks at your shoes and at his attire and Odette. Please um, dress appropriately. Crocs. He looks as though you've just offered to shoot his pet. (laughs) Nice Crocs. Crocs. Dress Crocs. Nice Crocs. Your dress Crocs. Crocs. (laughs) My dress Crocs. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. They're the ones that just like are the least filthy. (laughs) Yes. The The cleanest Crocs Crocs are the dress Crocs. I have to make a note of that dress Crocs now, I think. They're not encrusted. No. So you depart and shut the door behind you, leaving Odette and Drew to discuss. If we ever do a live show, this will be the best costume. Oh my god! I get to wear. I get to wear Crocs all the time. What big wallet chain? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so once we're outside and we're sort of out and maybe in the parking lot a little ways away, I would like to quietly just say, Remy's having a milkshake across the street if we want to. Well, we, sh- we should pop in. Him. He may be a new vampire as well. Yeah, maybe we he doesn't sure know that, that that's not a good idea. Dairy. Uh, I just mean he's sitting over there. I don't know. He's no. on the phone. I mean, it smells good. Yeah, let's go. It smells like, some- it smells yeah, like it something. It definitely smells. Uh, you're right about this. Okay. There is a scent. Oh, is it so bad that you guys can't even go into a restaurant? It's it's yeah. It's they like panting like a like a like a dog, like a sick dog. That's so weird. It smells really nice to me. So it smells it, the air as you if you are even a few steps closer to the coyote, the air is redolent with grease. Yeah, mm. the same grease that has been used all day and all night. For so weeks. French fries. <laughs> yeah, it's never changed that. Yeah. Fish. Never. Fish. <laughs> yeah, it just hasn't been changed. Cats. <laughs> Six o'clock this morning. Maybe the raccoon. Yeah. You don't know. Who knows? And the raccoon is back there. He's got the little <laughs> hat, paper <laughs> hat on. <laughs> the spatula. So it does smell bad. You, uh, vampires can tolerate it. Yeah, yeah. But it's, believe, not, it's not But it's it, not it isn't palatable. pleasant. It's up to you, of course. Uh, well, I mean, I assume that we sort of have. Tom, Tom walks up and opens the door for Amanda. Yeah, yeah we kind of have in. a foot in both worlds. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might be interesting. We did everything they told us to do, right? Yeah, there's no harm in talking to this guy. Yeah. So you enter the diner. Mm-hmm. A little sign in a placard, a placard on a stand that says "Please seat yourself." There are yeah, half a dozen or so uh, individuals, two of whom are clearly probably employees, long haul truckers, mm-hmm. belong to the big rigs outside, and the two of them are occupying a booth eating an enormous and very greasy pair of breakfasts together yeah, exactly. with the Rocky Mountain plate. It's oh. like <laughs> just a heap. Ham, what's, uh, bacon, sausage. What's, what's, what's that place? Uh, Beth's. Cafe oh my god! Oh, yeah, Beth. Oh. You, know, you know about Beth? Sure, up on Green Lake. Oh know, yeah, yeah, big, yeah. With a thirteen you... egg omelet. Yeah. Oh wow! Please I... give us an extra twenty minutes. <laughs> so it's bad. It's fucked up. Huge. The menu. The menu is adorned with a picture of a chicken annihilating itself <laughs> with the production of this omelet. So screwed up. It's messed up. That's yeah. gross. Yeah, yeah, they're eating the breakfast that size with a whole I've pot of coffee between them. <laughs> Oh, uh, I love that place, but that, that menu is fucked terrible. up. It's terrible. Okay. The other four diners, and I include Remy in, among that four, so the other three oh. that you think are mortal are scattered throughout the diner. A couple of them are at the bar, playing with their cell phones and drinking coffee. Did you turn coffee. back on your face thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I... Turn your face uh, back on. Did you turn your face on? Yeah. He, too. Um, so the cool thing about Mask of a Thousand Faces is that it makes him look like a nondescript individual who belongs wherever he is. So in this case... Uh, he appears to be uh, an ordinary person wearing um, maybe a, a trucker's uh, cloth jacket yeah. with your with your name sewn into the little name I got tag like the there. orange oh vest. God. Yeah, safety vest, yeah. you know? I love it. Trucker exactly. cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, appear, to go. he appears to be uh, attired for the long haul, for the road. Yeah. 16 tons, right? Do we just get right in the booth? Oh, so Remy slide is. In right next yeah, to he's him. at the bar. Remy, Remy's oh. actually at the. Uh, he's at the bar. He's sitting on one of those stools, and these are those red leatherette oh, stools no, that I haven't exactly been changed since the fifties. Yeah, and they're, they're like got cracking duct and tape. stuff, and yeah, um, actually uncomfortable to sit on because it's stabbing you. The sole employee that you see is a woman. Uh, she might be fifty. She might be a hundred. You're not sure. Her age is indeterminate. Uh, she's got one of those uniforms that likely also hasn't changed since the 1950s. And Stained. she is pointedly ignoring you, uh, hoping that you'll go away. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. God. Remy is intent on his cell phone, I muttering go into it. And sit next on the stool next to him and just like touch mm-hmm, the phone. So, so. There's a, a, a spark of electricity that you can yeah. see, and the phone goes dead. It's like, what the? Fuck. Hi. Big smile. Mind if we join you? And then he sees the rest of you. Yep. What did she do that for? I don't want you calling for help. It's a yeah. brick you- now, right? Mm. How'd you do that? Yeah. Mm. Shit. You got. You're. You're gonna have the in on this. Like you're gonna be able to. Tom. Yeah. You're gonna be able to just unfold this guy. Uh. Because you're legit. Tom's gonna. Try to get the waitress's attention. 
Yeah. Okay. Sit down on the other side. Remy, Remy like, is looking at the door, estimating his chances of getting away. Continue not liking them. Oreo milkshake? What's up, dear? What do you want? Milkshake. A milkshake. Yeah, yeah we got split. milkshakes. Yeah, Crush up some Oreos or something in there. Banana Ooh, split. Banana milkshake. Split. Yeah. Yeah, you need a banana split. Thank you. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> we got it all. So. That's uh, it. How about the rest of you? Please tell me she has like a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. Yeah. Um, oh, please tell me. She doesn't, but there's a little cigarette ash oh. accumulated in the corners of her makeup. The right here. <laughs> the yeah. 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 She's, she has smoked a cigarette very recently. Yeah. Yeah. Probably <laughs> about half of the food in the diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Milkshake. Banana split. Yeah. Uh, coffee. Uh, and yeah, I just I coffee just, all around. Yeah, coffee. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Have a seat. Coffee on me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just I, I just want to see this interaction. I've been waiting for this. She disappears into the kitchen to take care of your order. So can I do a quick scan of now that I'm much closer to Remy mm-hmm. of his tattoos to see if there's a story I can gather here or some sort of code I can read that would give me some insight into his. You know, Absolutely. Person. You don't even need to make a roll for it. Your background um, okay. is such that you would recognize what is to be seen. You couldn't see it in the hotel room, in the motel room easily, but on the back of his left hand, there is a very distinctive tattoo that you do recognize. You've seen it before in some of the patrons at the Hurt Locker tattoo shop that your friend Paul Hurt runs. Okay. And you've seen it just around in the streets because you are a, you are a, a person from that background. It's not, a prison it. ta- it's not a prison tattoo. It's the only non-prison tattoo he's got. Hmm. So uh, It's a gang. It's yeah. a criminal organization that runs up and down the West Coast. Call themselves Los Perditos. Uh, the Dangerous. Los Perditos. Perditos. Mm-hmm. Or the Lost Ones, sometimes. Okay. Depends on how you, you look at it. Uh, Los Perditos, huh? Yeah. What did you guys want with that uh, vamp? No, are lick. Gonna, are you gonna? Are you, gonna <sighs> take me, are you guys gonna take me back? Are you here to take me in? I'm not here to take you anywhere. I'm just curious what you guys wanted with that lick. What lick are you talking about? The one in the comet. Oh, Gravenstein. Yeah. No, a legend. Well, I don't know about that, but. You know, he used to be a prince. That's what they say. Yeah. Then he then he vanished, owing a lot of licks, a lot of favors. Oh. Heard that too. So we heard that the Camarilla found out where he was, and we thought we'd get there first. My friends were closest, so they went in. Are they dead? Oh yeah. They are dead. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. What did they think they were going to do? This guy used to be a prince. I mean, they were just going to get the body, right? He, we heard he's asleep. Mm. Let's pull him out. Yeah. So are you saying he's not asleep? Not so much I mean, anymore. I heard a few things through the wall. You guys weren't exactly being quiet. Yeah. He's, well, he's not asleep. Wow, he's, he's less asleep. Awake. He's less asleep. It's probably the opposite of it's asleep. Gravenstein's awake. Shit. I don't know what the word would be for the opposite of asleep, but... This is definitely him now. He's all hopped up on cannibal blood, so. He's goosed. <laughs> so it's bad. Gordy and Luis. Gordy's and dead, yep. Dawn, they're they're like, gone. Oh, they're Never maced, got to watch the just game. Just paste on the wall. Oh, he died Gordy as he lived. Gordy <laughs> loved sports. Loved. Loved. Loved, loved sports. To be oh, sure. Shit. Who are you on the phone with? Nobody now, thanks a lot. Who were you on the phone with? Some more of my dudes. Some more of your dudes. Yeah, I wanted to let them know that, you know, if they hit the motel here, we can take out a couple of... Besides that, do you guys have any big operations planned that we should know about? Something big in the works? <laughs> hey, here's your milkshake. Oh, thank you. Got one of those big frosty steel containers. Yes, with yes, the yes. And, yes. And glass. Secondary reservoir. Yeah. Double. It smells of sugar and milk and Oreo cookies. Oh, oh she put the Oreos in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a split. You're on your it's a 
giant glass canoe filled with ice cream and whipped cream and hot chocolate and caramel and nuts and bananas and with a cherry on top and she slides in it. You want you want two spoons? No, just one. Thank Suit you. yourself. Yeah, I, I um. And she leaves a pot of coffee on the counter. I eat the and cherry. And then goes back to ignoring you up. pointedly. Just, you yeah. eat the cherry. I eat the cherry. Or it's him too. You try to eat the cherry. Yeah. Let's just have a quick look at your character sheet, shall we? <laughs> okay. For no reason. For, for no, no reason. For no, no reason. No. I think there is a reason. I think there might be no reason, reason at all. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you bring the red fruit to your lips. It looks so inviting and it smells. It's that that uniquely syrupy sweet scent that yes. only cherries preserved in sugar brine, uh, not sugar brine, but sugar syrup has. Yes. Mm-hmm. You bring it to your lips and you're touching it with your tongue and you realize it, it, it tastes like you imagine ashes mm. would take. It doesn't taste delicious at all. You still want to eat it? Give it a try. Yeah, I'll still yeah, why not? All right, so you munch the cherry and pull out the stem, and yeah, it's like eating what you imagine eating dirt would be like. It feels oh, like a cherry you, in your you mouth, but it tastes it, like. Dirt. I bet that it's like. I bet that it's like when if you tried to really eat a pretend fruit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like one of those like ah. wax fruits. Uh, I, I as I eat it, like mm, when I pull up my phone and I start a Yelp review, I'm like. This place. <laughs> <laughs> Food is awful. Yeah. Service not good. <laughs> Service terrible. I think there's cigarette. Like, there there's is, ashes there might in be. my food. It might be what you're tasting. It might not be the fruit at all, yeah. right? Yeah, it might yeah. be. So, I don't know here's how you the can problem, it. Amanda. Having ingested the cherry and swallowed it yeah. without availing yourself of the blush of life feature of undeath. Mm hmm. You are immediately going to regurgitate this fruit right here, <laughs> I right like now. Put a hand on Jameson's <laughs> shoulders, and I say, a, "This is the only way they'll learn." Yeah, there is a there is a, a, a oh. squeeze in what used to be your stomach, and the cherry returns to the world oh. along with a little vampiric vitae, and is there makes a, a mess on the so counter. Is there a scenario where Ugh. she could use the blush of life? Yes, if she risks hunger to give herself the blush of life, she can hold the food down temporarily. It will return later. Oh. I, I think I want to do that because I think she would do that. Oh, we, oh no. Because she, she would want to keep would, her like right. <laughs> composure. Let's make, a, um, composure let's make a, a hunger check, excuse me, a rouse check to see if you get hungrier when you do this. Sometimes if you throw up, you just feel you better. You don't. You don't get hungrier at all. You maintain your composure and nice you manage to catch the cherry before it makes its reappearance in the world. Just a burp. <laughs> Throw up in your mouth a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And you keep it down. You got about an hour. <laughs> about an hour? I look at my watch. You, that you, cherry is a ticking time bomb. <laughs> yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. You can enjoy this banana split. It's all coming back, but you got about an hour. But I could enjoy the whole thing, though. Well, well I mean, it's just not going to yeah. taste good yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, it's not going to taste good. good. Yeah. There's, there's, okay, wow. I'm like Remy just, looks disgusted. How can you do that? Mm-hmm. Why? No, Why? It's the, what's the point? I know, it's gross, right? And Tom just downs the milk. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Is he also using Blush of Life? No. He no. doesn't know about Blush of he Life. He doesn't know about it yet. Oh, so, I you down, yeah. you down the cold, bitter ashes that taste nothing at all. Like Oreo mm. cookie. In fact, yeah. if there is a taste that is the farthest away, if there, if the taste of an Oreo cookie is the center of the universe, yeah. you are now standing on the planet that that's farthest from. Okay. Right. It is the exact opposite of what you wanted, um, and it's it's awful. It's absolutely. Can I throw it up and on Remy? Um, <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, you can direct it where you want it. Yeah, nice. I want it's part of the game. Boom! Ah! <laughs> Just all over him. The mixture of milk and sugar and uh, ice and, and cookie and blood. Some of your uh, vitae has come yeah. up with it. Now staining his biker jacket. <sighs> Why did you do that? <laughs> I am oh. going to roll for provocation here. 
Oh. Guys may not get out of this diner before dawn. Dude, we're going to turn that. You're going to turn this his, place into um, <laughs> the octagon. What is it there? He says, um, Fury <laughs> Frenzy. I think you might have provoked him. We'll see. Hungry <laughs> from the... Well, no. Okay. This just seemed like an intentional oh, dick. You know what? I rolled, I rolled, two, <laughs> I rolled Hunger like, Dice and I shouldn't have. This should have just been his uh, willpower. Barely, he maintains composure. You can see his hands digging into the four mica countertop oh. with all the cigarette burns. Oh. From I'm sorry, man. It's past. dairy. <laughs> it's, I can't do dairy. Every time, it's the same thing. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, going to be the least of your freaking worries. <laughs> God. What do you guys want, anyway? What's the What's the big thing going on? You guys got some kind of big deal going on. <laughs> Fuck do I know. Why don't you ask my boss? He'll be at Elysium tomorrow night to hear you're going. Oh. Oh, wow. What's your There's, boss's name? Word travels fast. <laughs> it does travel fast. You know, it would be more interesting and amusing for me to know and you to find out, but since I actually want to get out of here. I will throw up. I will before, order another milkshake. Dude, <laughs> you don't can have some of mine Sunday. Right now. He will. Don't, don't. I guarantee that he will. His name's Volkov. Volkov? Oh, very... He's Russian or he's very, Serbian very, or very who, Russian who knows. Sorcerer. Yeah. It's a very good tasty. name. All right. Who knows, man? Can I go? It's it's dawn's coming. My phone is you know, dead. I gotta going, wash up. I just get out of here. As well, yeah. yeah. We're, we're we'll leaving leave too. <laughs> what? We'll leave with you. Yeah, we'll leave with you. We're going too. Oh great. Hard the wait. Asshole. And I look over at the waitress, <laughs> and I'm just like, I cloud her memory. I'm just like. We were that. never. We, we were, were never, never here. here. Yeah. Never. Someone here. else threw up on the counter. Don't get the milkshakes, everybody, as I walk out. <laughs> Something with the machine. Something wrong yeah, with that mix. I don't know. Either. There's never a dull moment at the Coyote Diner yep. in the neighborhood of Fife on the outskirts of Tacoma. And with just a couple of hours to go before the rising of the sun, we bring our vampire story to a close. For now. I did it. Hey, we did it.